Hello, hello everybody and welcome to today's tournament of the Youth Cup. Today's tournament is going to be focusing on characters under the age of 18. It's just going to be the children getting into Yu-Gi-Oh! and learning the game before the adults inevitably ruin it for them. And it's going to be a lot of fun because it's hosted by an unknown person. An unknown person will be hosting today's tournament and they will be offering a thousand dollars to the winner, which for a kid is a lot of money and to an adult is going to be devoured by their rent. But what are you going to do? <laughs> so yeah, today's Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Era tournament is going to be a lot of fun. We're going to see a lot of our younger duelists go at it to see who is the strongest of the strong. Some duelists you might recognize, but their decks will have gotten some buffs, and some duelists you may not recognize, and that's going to be a lot of fun, because that means new decks are on the horizon. I hope you're all excited, I hope you're all ready. Let's go ahead and get into our Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Era Youth Cup Character Roundup. The first character we're going to be talking about today is my buddy Bones in the Youth Cup. Bones left this world as a child and his ghostly form does not age. Lately, Bones has managed to make some friends. One of his friends he calls Boss and they even have been teaching him to duel. Yes, everybody, Bones has started to make some friends which helps him keep his form in this world. And now that he has made some friends and even one of them is teaching him how to improve in Yu-Gi-Oh, his deck has gone through some buffs. In fact, this friend of his has offered him a brand new monster that fits his deck perfectly. So we're going to see if that boss of his can help him win today's Youth Cup or if he's going to fall and not be forgotten because he has friends now, so he's safe. The next character we're going to talk about is Mokuba Kaiba. Mokuba has been super busy trying to keep Kaiba Corp running. He was left in charge with no warning. His brother just up and left. He is hoping to win the tourney today to make Kaiba proud of him. That's right, Mokuba's not here today for the money. He's here today to test out his new deck, his new boss monster, and he's here to get himself some, you know, points with Kaiba because Seto Kaiba before he left was in a strange mood. But more importantly than that, he hasn't seen his brother in a bit, even though he knows where his brother has gone to. So, well, good luck to you, Mokuba Kaiba. I'm sure people are excited about your new deck and your new boss monster. And uh, we'll see how you do today. Rebecca Hawkins! Rebecca escaped from the moon thanks to help from her friend Rally. Rally knew a way to sneak Rebecca on one of the ships going to Earth. Rebecca has lost a god, failed to find her grandpa, and needs money. For those of you that don't remember what happened in her last tournament, she actually did summon Oblis the Tormentor. But because she's done that now, people know about its power and they took it from her. The Arcadia movement took it from her. So, she just needed to survive. There are still some, there's still something on the moon that she wants, but all that matters is that she is home and she is safe. And now she's going to need some money to go back to the moon, but maybe with some backup. So, good luck to you today, Rebecca. You used to be a pro, but you've been out of the pro league for so long that you're probably going to have to reapply. Good luck to you, and uh, I hope your deck does well today. Laura. Laura didn't want to leave her friend Ryota. Sadly, Ryota agreed with Sayer, sending her to this youth cup to test out the psychic strength of these young duelists. Lara has been having bad thoughts lately. Those bad thoughts seem to be stemming from her deck. So, we're going to see how Lara does today. Her only objective as part of the Arcadia movement is find out if there are any psychic duelists among the children and if they are powerful and worth converting in the big conversion that uh, will happen if the Arcadia movement expands to Earth. So, good luck to you, Lara. I know your Skull Servant deck did weirdly in the last tournament and most of it is because your AI just doesn't really know how to use it perfectly but I also saw you pop off and have like 8,000 attack points on three monsters so hopefully that happens again mm, yeah let's get on to our next character 
Rex Raptor! Rex Raptor barely qualifies for the Youth Cup as he is still in high school. He is excited to get some quick and easy wins off these young punks. He also wants the prize money to buy some new Dino cards. That's right, everyone is going to be freaking out because there are pro characters in today's tournament. Everybody is viable for today's tournament if they are 18 or under and, you know, they can make it to the venue. Rex Raptor obviously can and he is going to be a menace as one of the stronger duelists appearing today. Hopefully his dino cards do well and hopefully he just, uh... Doesn't brutalize any of the kids. I'm sure he's not here for his other, re you know, for his job reasons. He's here just to, just to get that thousand dollars. Gorgon for the Youth Cup. Gorgon had a rough time in the last minor league tournament. He has been improving his deck slowly since then. Now he has a chance to really improve his deck by winning this tourney and getting paid. Gorgon is a Domino High student, you might remember him from the minor league tournament that we streamed on YouTube. Gorgon is back and his deck has been improved and we're going to see if he can win a duel today. I know that this Youth Cup gives him a better chance as there's not going to be too many crazy characters, but it might be a little harder than the minor league because some of the characters are going to stand out, kind of like Rex Raptor. Yang! Yang has been getting more forgetful lately. She doesn't even remember how she lost in the minor league. Do you remember? <laughs> this youth cup has given her a new drive to improve, though she forgot to get new cards. Yes, this is one of the few characters that did not receive any real buffs for today's tournament. Her Dark Lucius deck isn't a bad deck. It sounds weird for me to say that. It isn't a bad deck. It does have some capabilities since it has so much to do with attack and defense points. That's how she built her deck. She just needs to get a little luckier this time as the minor league, someone did take her out. Good luck to you, Yang, and good luck to your Dark Lucius deck. Georgie! Georgie! All of Georgie's classmates have been telling him he got unlucky in the minor league tourney. His popularity has never really translated to dueling skills, but he thinks he learned a lot from the last tournament. Today, Georgie's going to be showing up with every powerful card he could find, and even some of the students gave them their rare, gave him their rarest cards just because they're so, you know, they they keep fawning over the guy. They're like, we just want to see you win. So we're going to see if Georgie wins, and we're going to see how he does. This Domino High student can definitely pack a punch with his ultimate monster. Alda V Stormer! Alda's viewers on Soul Seekers have been raging, uh, raging after her loss in the minor league. She has annoying viewers calling her a fake duelist and worse viewers sending death threats to Yami Kuroda, the person that knocked her out. Alda did so well in the last tournament, she did top 8 and it looked like she could go all the way to semifinals but was knocked out by Yami Kuroda. This has caused her fan base to kind of become extremely toxic. It's a normal thing to happen to popular streamers, and she is no exception. So, hopefully Alda does well today, and hopefully she gets some nicer people in her chat and doesn't have to deal with the bullcrap. Good luck to you, Alda V-Stormer, and have a great time in today's tournament. Light Su Kiko! Light has managed to become one of the strongest duelists at her elementary school. She keeps improving in order to thwart her brother's attempts to meet his idol. The Fraud Night Shroud. I don't know why, but that brother of hers is still a freaking... Uh, still idolizes Night Shroud. Even though Night Shroud hasn't given us a single good duel since the Master Era began. Either way, she's going to do really good today. She did amazing in the minor league tournament, making it as far as, I believe, semifinals. So, or maybe top eight. Either way, she did amazing. Uh, uh, let's hope she could do well today. Let's hope her deck does good. Her Karaz monster is definitely a brutal card to deal with. And um, I don't think her opponents today should be as bad, except for maybe one or two. Mickey Hops! Mickey does a lot of practice duels with his mom and sister. He loves watching his mom duel. Uh, uh, he loved watching his mom duel in the minor league and was cheering her on in the minor league tourney. He can't wait to duel today. 
Mickey Hops is an interesting character as his mother has actually already been in a tournament and this is the first time she's ever let him enter a tournament. I think the only reason she was okay with it was because it was specifically a youth cup and there wasn't any freaking annoying adults there because we all know the most toxic people are going to be those damn adults. So we'll see how Mickey does today. This will be his first time dueling in a large competition. The only practice he has are against his sister and his mom. So good luck to you, uh, Mickey. I hope you have a fun time. Yami Kuroda! Yami Kuroda has been getting death threats ever since he beat that streamer girl. This has not faced him as much as losing in the minor league tourney. His friends at school laughed at him for his loss. Yama Kuroda is known as one of the four strongest duelists at his school, one of the four kings. And now the other kings, including one he knows very closely, his sister, is laughing at him. So, hopefully he can win today to make up for that. Hopefully he can earn back some rep at his school. But we'll see if he can do it. Good luck to you, Yami Kuroda. Your Kaius monster is a beast. Lily da na na na. Lily's streams have been getting really popular since she dueled those Duel Academy students. So many of her viewers want to attend Duel Academy now. Yeah, that has kind of backfired. The fact that she is one of the highest ranking pros and that she went to do that Duel Academy tournament, you know, the GX, that GX tournament to, um, help it with its popularity she did too good of a job because she had a great fight against chump daddy and that rematch fight made him it made her look super popular and it made the school look super cool especially after she lost to one of their students still we're gonna see how lily does today she is a high ranking pro duelist and she she's gonna feel a little unfair compared to some of these other kids but who knows maybe one of them will just get lucky and put you know knock her out of here other than that, though, she might be the strongest duelist we have today in terms of rank. Sarah Taker of the Youth Cup. Sarah is still considered one of the strongest pro duelists. Her appearance today has scared a lot of the other young competitors. Sarah needs to earn some cash today to help her find someone in particular. Guys, this is a very interesting situation. Sarah is looking for somebody, somebody that apparently is not in this country, which means that she's going to need some cash and getting a thousand dollars from a quick tournament seems like a very good way to, you know, yeah, it seems like a very quick way to earn that cash. Still, it feels a little unfair that such a high ranking pro has come down from Mount Olympus to duel such unsuspecting children. I know she is a child herself, but dear god her deck is so freaking horrifying. I remember when I first like revealed the deck at Illusion Park, everybody was freaking out in the chat. So, and the comments themselves, the people in the YouTube comments were even saying, holy crap, what is going to happen? Until you saw her flop because she never got her monster, even though she has multiple copies. She had three copies of it and three trap cards to help her get to it. I don't know what happened there. Maybe this tournament, it won't happen, but either way, she is probably going to be one of the biggest menaces in this tournament and might be the highest ranking person in the tournament. Let's wish her luck. Let's have a lot of fun and uh, let's get on to our next character. Bella. Bella has been asked to find some friends today in the Youth Cup. Her caretaker Sayer sent her all the way to Earth just to find friends just like her. Yeah, Sayer has still, you know, manipulated some of these kids. Bella is one that we've seen before during the Arcadia expansion. And now she is on Earth showing off her synchro monsters. And these synchro monsters have definitely been, you know, <laughs> They've definitely been scaring the world because everyone on Earth has been going, Oh crap, I need to get a Synchro Monster. Where do I get a Synchro Monster? But they're not yet for sale. There's no way to get them yet. You have to wait. You have to be patient. And Bella is just making them more upset because why does a freaking five-year-old... She, she, I don't know how old she is. She's probably like 10. I don't know. Uh, why does a freaking five-year-old have a freaking Synchro Monster? Either way... Her only goal today was to find uh, pers uh, people just like her, see if there's anyone out there with some psychic potential, and uh, to win the tournament would just be for fun. Who knows? A kid with $1,000 just sounds kind of scary, though. Christopher! Christopher has been wondering if what they are did on the moon was really the right thing. 
Before he could talk to Sayer about it, he was sent down to Earth to find more psychic friends. Christopher is a little bit strange because he did not exactly like what was going on during the Arcadia expansion. He is still, you know, under Sayer's care, so he doesn't really have enough freedom to want to rebel, but he is definitely questioning their methods. He also has a Synchro Monster today, which is going to freak out a lot of the competitors in today's tournament. His deck is going to move a lot faster than some of these other kids, but who knows? Maybe some of these other kids will surprise us. Yeah, this is a weird balance now that you think about it. We got kids from space with Synchro Monsters. We got pro-level duelists like Rex Raptor, Lily, and Sayer. And then, of course, we got the young student, the young kids from the minor league. And those minor league kids do not, you know, keep up with these. We got Alda V Stormer, Yami Kuroda, Light Tsukiko. I mean, they're strong duelists, don't get me wrong. But are they this level yet? I don't think so. So, wish them luck. Unless you like the stronger characters, then you don't have to wish them luck. You're probably, probably just chilling. Sunny Snips! Sunny is a duelist from Heartland Middle School. She was excited to hear that a youth tournament was being held near her hometown. She hopes to win today to make her school chums proud. Sunny Snips is going to be an interesting duelist. She likes to use a cat-themed deck, or not a cat-themed deck, I'd say a tiger-themed deck, and she likes the cat-based cards. Any fiend-like card, she's a big fan of. So, Sunny Snips, we are going to wish you luck. Hopefully, your middle school chums will be cheering you on in today's tournament. Not like this thing is going to be televised or anything, but if any of them are in the crowds cheering you on, that'll be cool. Um, honestly, I would say her deck is one of the better ones today for these random characters, just because there are a lot of powerful tiger cards that can counter a lot of strategies that that most of our characters use, because we're still living in a recruiter, a recruiter age. Still... I wish you luck, Sunny Snips. You're definitely going to be a powerful character. And uh, I hope the cat cards work or the tiger cards work. Minion Jaws. Minion Jaws was ordered by his boss to take the prize money today. He hasn't been dueling for a while since Diesel was supplying the gang with pro money before. His fave streamer is here today. Yeah! Minion Jaws is a duelist we haven't seen in quite a while. He still has his freaking high school uh, ID, which is how he got into today's tournament. Just like Rex Raptor, they're like 17 years old, so they're here. And he did qualify for it. His deck has gone through some major buffs and he's hoping to show off some cool strategies today. But what's more, most important to him isn't winning, it's seeing his favorite streamer. Because his favorite streamer, Lily Donna Nana, is here today. So, good luck to you, Jaws, and it's been a long time since we've seen you. So, hopefully you do good today. Ricky! Ricky is the second smartest student at Domino High. His grades are near perfect, and his dueling, sk dueling skills are pretty spectacular, too. This will be his first time really testing his skills. Ricky has only dueled his school chums back at Domino High, and Domino High's quality of duelist has definitely gone downhill since Taya, Bakora, and Yugi have left the school, and Joey, but Joey sucked when he went to the school. Um, so Ricky is one of the new strong students at Domino High. Still, he's more focused about his on, on his grades, and we're going to see how he does in a dueling tournament. This will be his first time testing his deck in a tournament setting. It could be fun, it might have some fun, interesting strategies behind it, and maybe some spells and traps we've never seen before, but Ricky is still just a kid that uh, is coming from a school that no longer packs a punch. Minion Serpent! Minion Serpent has been having a rough time in the Diesel Gang. He used to feel untouchable, but the Diesel Gang is no longer a pro- uh, Well, Diesel Kane is no longer a pro, and their territory has been at risk. Diesel sent him here to earn some quick cash. Yeah, the Minion Serpent did not do so well in our last tournament, but his Sea Serpent deck has definitely received some major buffs. The only thing that matters now is that he needs to get this cash because they are losing popularity, they're losing territory, they're one of the smallest gangs in Domino now. Back when they were first starting out, they were one of the biggest, and now they're one of the smallest, getting pushed out by the Frost Gang, getting pushed out by the Abyss Gang. They are just suffering, and they're only holding on to one territory right now. So, good luck to you, Minion Serpent. I know Diesel Kane can really use the money, but it kind of is his own fault for not improving as a duelist. He kind of just coasted off of his high school deck for way too long. 
Saika Kohinata. Saika transferred to the American campus of Duel Academy during her second year. She became one of its top duelists and was entrusted with one of their legendary cards. Saika is one of the strongest duelists at the American campus of Duel Academy. She was given one of the planetary cards that we have seen before in the Underground King of Hell tournament. We're going to see if Saika can use her planetary card well today, or we're going to see if she falls apart against some of these other youths. It's going to be interesting seeing her duel today. I don't really know what to expect as she has never dueled on camera before. But she does seem to have a rivalry going on with Alexis Rhodes. And Alexis Rhodes is one of the reasons she actually left Duel Academy in, uh, for American Academy. Good luck to you, Saika. You should be a good duelist or Saika. I don't know how to pronounce her name. I hope she's a good duelist and I hope that she shows off her ultimate planetary card. Min Yin Kaizo. Kaizo technically dropped out of high school. He is already 18, but still has a school ID that says he is 17. He used that to sneak into the tourney today. He did that to earn some money for the Diesel Gang. Yes, Minion Kaizo, the right-hand man of Diesel King, and the guy who actually did pretty well back in the Champions Carnival. He has returned for today's tournament, and he's going to be doing his absolute best to get that Diesel Gang a nice cash inf infusion. Still, I don't like the idea that he actually cheated his way into today's tournament. He is aged out. He's 18. He should not be here. But at the end of the day, he had his school ID, and no one's going to question him on it. So... Good luck to you, Kaizo, and uh, stop cheating and stop being a bastard. Sammy Trunks! Sammy has been struggling to make his name as a duelist. He keeps fighting hard with the cards Pegasus gave him, but he can't win any tournaments. Are his elephant cards bad? Yeah, I don't know what to tell you, Sammy. Maybe... This might be harsh to hear, but maybe Pegasus gave you a bad deck. I know way back when, when we were back in the Champions Carnival, maybe that deck was beautiful. Before the American Championship was crowned, maybe that deck was beautiful. But an elephant deck in this day and age, it just doesn't seem to have the same oomph behind it. Still, Semi Trunks does have access to a really good card called the Flying Elephant and we're going to see if he can make it work today. I just feel bad for the kid because he has never been able to win a tournament before. This is probably one of his best chances to do so, and it feels like Pegasus betrayed the kid. He, he gave it... Pegasus, imagine the creator of card games comes to you in the audience and says, here's a deck. This is from me, the guy who made the freaking video game. You're going to be something great, kid. And then you go to a bunch of tournaments with the deck that he gave you, and you win nothing. And you do horribly. Does that just make you a bad duelist, or are the elephant cards to, to blame? I'm going to let the chat decide that right now, because I don't want to feel bad. I don't want to talk bad on Sammy Trunks. He looks like he's 10 years old, and I'll feel bad talking bad about a 10-year-old. So, go ahead. You could tell me, is Sammy the problem, which would technically be the AI, or are the elephant cards just bad cards, and Pegasus, you know, screwed this kid over, and yeah, just... It's a Kung Fu Panda situation where he it's like the master like gets your hopes up for years or the master gets your hopes up saying you're going to be the dragon warrior and then you're just a dud. <laughs> Poor bastard. All right, let's move on to the next character. Strong Jukyu. Strong is the fourth strongest duelist at his elementary school. He is a pretty powerful duelist, but his mate Yami Kuroda always teases him about being number four. That's right, this is one of the four kings at that elementary school we keep bringing up. We now have seen three of them, and three of them are participating in today's tournament. Strong's deck is a very interesting one that it's based around high attack point monsters. So. We're going to see how Strong does today. We're going to see if those big beater monsters can put a dent in all of these other characters. Or we're going to see if Mr. Fourth Place is going to fall apart. Still, I wish you luck, Strong Juku. I think you're a pretty interesting character. I loved building your deck personally, and I think it'll put a lot of... It's going to be one of those decks that's kind of like Anka D's deck, where it has a huge counter to a lot of decks. 
because Anka D's Banishment deck 100% countered a lot of players, which is why she went as far as top four in the Underground Clash tournament. Strong Juku has a deck kind of like that. It has nothing to do with Banishment, but it's a deck kind of like that where it counters a lot of basic strategies. Still, it's also just a big beater deck, so if you like beater decks, this is the guy for you. Weevil Underwood, the king of games! Weevil is the top duelist in the world and has been getting a big head about it. His boss was telling him to set up easy fights to get them into the pros. Weevil broke off from them and started his own group. Everybody, the king of games, showed up to the youth tournament, and in his mind, he did it saying, oh, I'm going to give all these kids a treat. They get to duel the strongest duelist in the world, and instead, he's just going to bully them out of $1,000. He's just going to rob these kids. All of these kids are here to just try and have fun, and this son of a bitch, this 17-year-old as far as I'm concerned, I don't care what the anime or manga says, we're writing her own story, this 17-year-old son of a bitch, the king of games, has <laughs> showed up to a youth tournament and is going to take $1,000 from them. Oh my god, hello Michael Joy. remember, wait, whose quote was that? I don't remember whose quote it was, but there's a quote where it's just like, F them kids. That is Weevil Underwood right now. Weevil Underwood is the embodiment of that quote. Everybody, that is all the characters showing up today in, t in the Youth Cup. The Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Era Youth Cup has some of the most interesting duelists in the world. We have brand new characters. We have Macy Hop's child, Mickey Hops. We have Weevil Underwood, the king of games. We have other pro duelists like Lily Dunanana. And then we have powerful elementary school duelists like Strong Juku, Yami Kuroda, Light Tsukiko. I mean, it's just a, it's just a mishmash of bullcrap in my opinion. This is going to be horrible. It's going to be fun to watch. But, like, I know a lot of people coming into this tournament were like, oh, cool, we're going to see a lot of, you know, weaker, younger duelists just go at it just to see if they can make $1,000. That's how I tried to make it look at the beginning of this, uh, uh, the beginning of this character roundup. And then you get to the end of it and you realize that it's just stacked against them. Those kids are screwed. These, these older kids are just going to bully them. But who cares? That's going to be it. That's all the characters I have to reveal for today. I'll be seeing you all real soon in the chat. I hope uh, you're ready for today's tournament. Let's get it started. Oh my god. <laughs>
Does Weevil still have Silver Calcos? Yes, he does. He Shadow broke off from that group, but yes, he does. He still has them. <laughs> one year. Hey, thank you so much for subbing, everybody. And I thank you, everyone, who did it during the intro. Sorry, during the intro, I usually spend that time eating or I, I go to the bathroom or, you know, I just get ready for today's stream. Uh, but I am excited for today. Today is going to be a lot of fun. We don't need the... Oh, uh, yeah, we can do bets. All right. Well, bets first fight, Georgie versus Moku Bakaiba. That'll be, that'll be the first fight of the day. And let's go ahead and see what we do. Uh, when Pegasus made his deck, I'm sure when Pegasus first made his deck, he didn't want to screw him over. If you think about it, the Champions Carnival was when he got to use it. And in that tournament, an 1850 beater monster with a, win a game winning effect is pretty freaking good. He still lost that tournament, but it was a pretty good deck, uh, a pretty good monster. Um, but ever since then, he just hasn't really upgraded it. So it's kind of, he kind of screwed himself. Yeah, he kind of screwed himself. That's not... I, I can't really blame... I can't really blame the other guy. That's not your... It's not Pegasus's fault that the kid didn't improve with time. He just thought the, the cards you gave him were perfect. That doesn't work. Yeah. So, yeah, here are all your characters today. I hope you guys are going to have a lot of fun. I'm going to go ahead and get the first tournament start... Or the first fight started. Thank you so much for following. I appreciate that. The first fight shall begin now. It's going to be Georgie versus Mokuba Kaiba in the Youth Cup. Georgie uses, a, he's from Domino High, and for those of you that have been keeping up with the lore, you all know that Domino High has been pretty bad duelists ever since we've left, uh, Taya left, or ever since Yugi left, ever since Joey left, ever since all that, those people left, you know, they all graduated. They haven't gotten much better. It's like the new kids came in and they just kind of suck at dueling. But it, what are you going to do? Public school. I'm not, I'm not learning shit anyway. Uh, let's see here. Mokuba, Mokuba. Uh oh. Okay. I'm having some trouble here. Uh, why is he not showing up? Why is Mokuba not showing up? Okay, what's the problem here? Is it one of those things where he's too small? Did it, did it not size him correctly? No, it says he's not here at all. What the fuck? All right, well, Mokuba is supposed to be here, but uh, he's looking a little weird. It looks like he's not sized correctly, but I'm going to try and see if I can do this live. Screw it. I'll do it live. I don't know why he's not where he's supposed to be. Mokuba, you're, you're going against the rules here. Uh, it looks like we already have the Starry Night Dragon, so Mokuba is showing off his brand new cards. Yeah. When you work for Kaiba Corp, or, or hell, if you're the brother of Seto Kaiba, you definitely have access to the good shit. So, Mokuba is now where he should be. Freaking bad, Cooper. There we go. And there goes all your spells and traps. And honestly, that hand is kind of ass. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. That hand is terrible. The attack goes through. Star Knight Dragon is not going to let you do any burn. And Slate Warrior will still get its effect off, so you lose 500 attack points. A big loss for Starry Knight Dragon. A couple basic cards can beat that now. So, Giant Germ comes back. He can't beat any of these cards currently, but I know something that could. And he's not going to go for it. He refuses. Interesting. And now we have Optoclops just ready to die. It literally is sitting there ready to die. That's what it looks like to me. Uh, we're going to go ahead and summon the Grey Wing. We're going to destroy... Uh, we're going to banish the opponent's monster. This time we're going to destroy Giant Germ. Sure. And we're going to do 1300 damage. Why not? That should be fun. And Optoclops has returned to defeat the Grey Wing, at least. Raigeki Break is a really good card. That's going to come in handy, but he's not willing to premature burial anything. I haven't... I, well, I didn't missed half the duel. Oh, no, you are willing to premature burial. Um, and there it is, everybody. Boss Monster Ultimate Obedient Fiend is here. With the Ultimate Obedient Fiend, he now controls the duel. Good job, Georgie. I'm actually proud of you. I'm really proud of you. Holy crap, Georgie did it. He popped Starry Night Dragon. Yay. <laughs> And say Yariyu, what the hell? That used to be his boss monster, and it's back. The boss monster returns. That card's useless. It only works if he drew his other card. So it looks like Ultimate Obedient Fiend is not going to be so obedient. It's just going to sit there and do nothing. And uh, yeah, he's got another Starry Night Dragon, which could do the job if he special summons it. And that is what I'm talking about. It's time for a Starry Night Starry Dragon. And this card is going to pop the ultimate Obedient Fiend. Ain't no obedience anymore. Mokuba Kaiba takes game number one. Great job, Mokuba. Very proud of you. So, we're going to go ahead and get into the next duel. Let's see how these guys can do. 
It's cool to see Mokuba using his old boss monster with his new boss monster. They seem to work well together. Should be clean. I'm gonna get my thing all set up. There we go. That is a terrible hand in my opinion. <laughs> I don't like that hand. That hand could be better. Pot of Greed comes through. What does he get? Okay, Slave Warrior helps. It's not the best card in the world, but it's a pretty damn good one. Pretty damn good one indeed. I wish I had one of those cards in older Yu-Gi-Oh games. Oh boy. He's already got Starry Night Dragon. That's fun. So, Starry Night Dragon's just going to chill for a minute. What do I think about the new support? I'm the one that gave it to him, so I'm not surprised by anything yet. Everything so far has been uh, making sense. Flying Kamikiri comes through, and it's just a Flying Kamikiri. Sure, that's fun. Uh, just joined. I was wondering if you could start teaming with Cyrus on Tag Force. I might. It might happen. I can't say. I, I won't say who I will be ta ta tag teaming with. But it might happen, so be excited. The only ones that are guaranteed not going to happen, I am not going to tag team with... Uh, what's his name? Ooh, Starry Knight is 25 direct. I'm not going to tag team with Zane or Chumley. Those two are a guarantee because I already did in previous Let's Plays. Anyone else is on the board. So we're going to go ahead and Dark Hole. It is the right thing to do. Dark Holing is a great idea. And then we're going to call the... Oh, no. <laughs> no, we're not. All right, so we're just going to play with a brick because you, br you wanted this. This is an active choice you've made. Okay. I thought you were going to call the Haunted, then do stuff, and then use Sevi Storm. But I guess it would have resulted in a Toriental Tribute, so it didn't really matter. Abaki comes through, and it will do some damage. Thank you so much. I hope you guys do have a lot of fun with the new Let's Play. It may seem a little old school, but I'm going to show you all of the best points about old school dueling. And that's a Smashing Ground. That's very unlucky for you. I feel like our buddy Georgia here is about to get knocked out by Mokuba, even though Mokuba seems to not have any powerful monsters at this moment. So, we're going to get a draw in. Hey, that's a really good card. Okay. Not even willing to attack with it, and I'm okay with that because, you know, that's that's a lot of deflected damage. Um, yeah, that's a lot of deflected damage. And you're going to make sure they can't tribute summon. Good play. Good, good play. So we got ourselves a set. The Sutra was funny. I found that funny as well. The great Pokemon was destroyed by, well, not destroyed, but stopped by it. And it looks like Giant Germ's going in with the Wall of Illusion combo. And somehow this man has taken over the duel. I don't know how it's possible, but Georgie, the pretty boy of Domino High, is actually in control of a duel for once in his life. Let's go Georgie fans. There's like zero of you, but who cares? Let's go Georgie. Let's see if he can pull off some fun plays. Ooh, Optoclops is really good. That's three monsters. Three. Ooh, Ring of Destruction. He was holding back. He was holding back a Ring of Destruction. Here comes the Legendary. He messed that up, but it's fine. AI will be AI. This is 2,000 damage, and it will do piercing. That's really scary. And we're going to see how it goes. So, you got to deal with it. How are you going to beat 2K? Obviously, Star Knight or Sayari, you could do it. But you need your support to make that happen. Mystic Tomato's good. He can go in for piercing and battle. Is Mokuba actually in danger? Mass Dragon might save the day. Though Mystic Tomato's the perfect card to fight a Mass Dragon. Literally the infinite clash shall begin. Who will win this clash? Mass Dragon's choice versus Mystic Tomato's choice. Who is better? All right, Mass Dragon, obviously. Mystic Tomato, obviously. And uh, she does not have the God card. Mystic Tomato goes in. He's out of dragons. The troop dragons were the targets, and they're all gone. Georgie has this. He just needs to get one more attack off. Mokuba gets his field spell. Mokuba gets his trap card. And on the last turn, he drew his Starry Knight Dragon. The legendary card is dead. The other card is banished. And Mokuba goes in with his new boss monster and wins the duel. 2-0. That is Mokuba, everybody. Georgie tried. He tried so damn hard, but it did not matter. Mokuba Kaiba takes the game. Good job, Mokuba. Very proud of you. So let's go ahead and let's uh, get into our bracket and see who's up next. The next people that will be fighting are Christopher, one of the Arcadia Movement children, versus Sunny Snips, one of the new duelists that uses a tiger deck. So, Tiger Deck or Christopher's Synchro Monster uh, Psychic stuff. Well, he's not Psychic, but, you know, does, uh, he, he is a Psychic. He's not using a Psychic Deck is what I'm trying to imply. Let's have some fun with these two. Let's see who's better. All right. So, where is Christopher? 
Christobel. There he is. Found him. All right, let's start this thing. Who believes in the Arcadia's future cards, which haven't worked on Earth so far? And who believes in Sunny Snip's Tiger deck? All right. You know, her original name was going to be Sunny Nips for, you know, Catnip. And then I thought two seconds more, and then I realized I was not going to give her that name. So I changed it to Sunny Snips, and I think it's okay. <laughs> so let's see how she does with her Tiger deck. Ooh, Savage Coliseum. That's really fun. And MST comes through. He doesn't even have extra deck. It's, it's right there. It's right next to his name, Christopher. And, oh, Roaring Earth is pretty good. UFO Turtle. Piercing damage is beautiful thanks to Roaring Earth. There's nothing to weaken. There's nothing survived. And there we go. Very nice. Very nice. King Tiger Wong who stops weak monsters. That is not a weak monster, but it will cost you more life points for not being weak. And yeah, that sucks. So what is that card? Let's take a look at it. Lava Landslate, it's gone. It did 2,100 damage to Christopher and then left. <laughs> great job. Great job, Lava Lil Lancelor. That's great. Oh, shit. Burning Tiger. Flame Tiger. I don't know. I don't know these cards, honestly. We're out of my era. And there it is, everybody. The winner of game number one is Sunny Snips. Her Tiger cards are too good. Let's get into game number two. <laughs> Attacks once, and I lost. <laughs> Ooh, that's really good. She, ha she has a super busted hand right now. Sunny Snips is going to be unstoppable. And we're going to throw away some cards, which are actually combo. Very good combo. Banishment will equal 2,100 attack. Very nice. And uh, 2,100 attack saves you from what could have happened. Backfire is pretty interesting. Uh, we got Poison Fangs and probably a monster. They don't activate bo both Poison Fangs. That's a shame, but I guess it will come in handy in case it does get destroyed. I would play both Poison Fangs because I'm not a baby. So Backfire versus Poison Fangs. It's weird. It's going to be Spell Burn versus Trap Burn. And Savage Coliseum will, the, will do the healing. Oh, wait. I forgot. Poison Fangs is for her other monsters. Not for this one specifically. It's for her other monsters. She's got plenty of others that are pure beast. And the attack comes through. And that's fine. I'm sure she's about to show you something special. So, heart of the cards. Let's see that. Uh, oh, Pot of Greed. We might see something else. Okay, no, we're going to see it. This is her new monster. Oh, shit, what is that? I don't know what that is. Damn it. Ah, oh, that sucks. A trap card that just pops you? That's not fair. That's not fair. That doesn't work. Jimmy John's is our sponsor. Is that one of the ads? God damn it. <laughs> Freaking ads. All right, don't worry. Once I become partner, I'll have better control of the ads I've heard. So I'm going to be able to time them so that if I have to have ads... I can put them in between each fight rather than during. And that'll be the, that'll be good. Life will be back to normal. All right. Thank you for the sub. I appreciate that. And with that sub, no more ads for you. We're really close to 100. I feel really good right now. And yeah, Backfire is going to do its job. Backfiring. And that card has an effect. That's always fun. Backfire's here. You know, I don't really know Flame Tiger that well. Let's take a little peek at it. During your draw phase of this card, yada, yada. I don't want to read it. It's too long. <laughs> I, I took a look at it. Eh, it's, it's not the longest I've ever read, but it's too long. And UFO Turtle comes through. That's going to suck. This time it looks like Sunny's on the losing side, which makes sense. The Arcadia people have some futuristic cards compared to the regular people. So this is, uh, this is what should have been happening. Oh. Oh, that's a real nice... Yeah, that was really nice. Heck yeah. And UFO Turtle will be going to uh, the grave, which means they both burn. But Sunny is the one that can't take the burn right now, so she's in a really bad spot. I have no clue who the weakest duels in Tag Force 6 is. I haven't done that Let's Play in forever. It's been a very long time. 900 damage comes through, but again, you're going to cost yourself 500. You do gain 3, so you're keeping yourself alive with Savage Call CM. Which is very funny to think about, that a Coliseum so savage is what keeps you alive. But whatever. And Savage Coliseum is going to go there. You'll have to wait till tomorrow to find out anything about Jaden. We have ourselves a trap. That's always good. Savage Coliseum activates. That's whatever. 
She got her boss monster, but she's going to go with Wangfu, which is fine, because that will prevent the opponent from summoning anything, uh, especially if it's weak stuff. Savage Coliseum heals. They are in the lead. Okay. That is good. That is really good. She has actually taken the lead for the first time in this duel. Great job, Sunny Sniffs, making a comeback. The opponent can double backfire, but that means that they're... Oh, they did have something above 14. And that monster above 14 is going to heal them, which, yeah, pretty good. But at the same time, that tiger's a little too strong. The AI just won't use both. That's what the AI does. It looks like boss monster time. Here comes the Beast King. And we know the Beast King is going to end this duel. At least one of them is. Either the King or the Beast. And even though Backfire got it pretty close, you know, down to a 1,500 life points, it do not matter. Unless that card has a burn effect. It do not really matter. A thousand burn, yeah. Doesn't matter. Too much heal involved. Poison Fangs does matter. Ends the duel. That is going to be it. Sunny Snips 2 O's her opponent. That's really brutal. <laughs> that is so brutal. We've had a couple 2 O's to start that, and it crashed. All right, and this is a real crash, I promise you. Uh, let's go ahead and reopen that. Don't worry, it happens sometimes. You, can get, you get used to it. Let me just get rid of the faces while I have some free time. And let's go look at who's up next in the, in the fights. The next characters that we'll be dueling are going to be Ricky of Domino High versus Strong Jukyu. Ricky versus Strong Jukyu. Now, let's see here. Although, I guess if any tournament was going to have a bunch of 2-0s, it's going to be the one where a bunch of pros showed up just because they happen to be young and they're taking $1,000 from a bunch of kids. That just, it feels so bad. I love it, but it feels so bad. So, Ricky versus Strong Jukyu. Let's see how these two do. Should be fun. Strong is the fourth strongest student at uh, his school. He's one of the four kings. He's from OCG Elementary. And that's what I've decided to call it, and I like that name. So we're going to stick with it. And his opponent, Ricky, is a Domino High student. So it's a high school versus an elementary student. And we're going to find out who's better. Ricky is the second smartest student at that school and one of its best duelists. All right, both characters look ready to duel, and I'm ready to watch. Let's have some fun. Pot O Greed, why not? Pot O Greed comes through. That's a big strike. Yeah, he got his muscle medic card. That's fun. You missed last week, but don't you worry. We're happy to have you here today. And there goes Dark Hole. Crap. <laughs> Dark Hole. Oh, insect imitation. Ricky has got an insect. Now it's gone. Damn. All right, Ricky loses everything, and so does Strong Jukyu, so he's going to need to play a new monster. Strong Jukyu's new monster will be Elite Goblin Attack Force for massive damage going the wrong way. That's a big change. The massive damage went the wrong way. So we got a couple traps ready to go. Life is good. Let's see what our opponent decides to do about it. Set. Coward. Only coward set. And double Mechamorph, that's funny. You don't need both right now, but it's fun that you have them. Flying Kamakiri is going to do its job. Mostly the AI will only use that card when they have it for games, so don't get excited. Sometimes they'll use it a little early if they must defeat a monster with, with it, but typically you'll only see it for game. So what are you going to do, Ricky? You're getting outmatched here. Oh, Ricky's scared. That's not good. Ricky's in a bad spot, everybody. We need to see some comeback. Ah, there's the muscle medics. They're coming in. They should be the ones to attack first, but he doesn't know that the zone monster's effect is going to cost him. Oh, actually, no Howling Insect. It do not matter. Howling Insect comes through. Flying Kamakiri comes through. That's all well and good. Let's see what you get this time. Flying Kamakiri, sure. You do you. Don't use it on the medic. I know, right? Please, please don't have that kind of AI. Harpies! Feather Duster! What are we going to hit? What trap was that? Oh, his Ego Boost. Okay, big loss to the Ego Boost, but that's okay. Not everybody really needs that. And Indomitable Fighter. We just saw this in the last duel. Perfect. And the attacks. Please attack with the Muscle Medic for my sake. Thank you. Oh, but it was another Howling Insect. This kid is just holding on for dear life. He doesn't realize that he's outmatched. And did not attack, even though you've attacked every other turn of this tournament. You just decide not to attack on this turn. Why? Why? 
Muscle Medic has been stolen. It will heal the opponent by 200. Sure. Back to 6k. Nice and healthy. Is Ricky a Weevil fan? We'll find out after today. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. And, yeah, uh, the attack goes through. You healed the opponent by 100. And the attack goes through. And Elite Goblins do 22. Yeah! Strong Juku. There's a strategy. Okay, we got ourselves a set. That's always fun. Maybe it's a very powerful set that'll save you. Unfading, thank you so much for Unfading subbing. I really do appreciate that. Give sub subs viewers. up to our limit. We broke the limit of 100 subs. Thank you so much. And with that, everyone that just got a gift sub, that's, guess what? You don't have to deal with the bullcrap of ads anymore. Thank God for that. So, now all we have is triple Megamorph and nowhere to use it. I would use it because I'm not dumb, but the AI is, so... Nothing we could do about that. Harpy's Feather Duster comes through. And Lair Wire is a good use. Yep, gotta use it before it goes away. Get rid of the Muscle Medic. Yep, triple Mega Morph, but he can't use it because his AI refuses. Yep, AI refuses because it won't give him game. End phase there. Yeah, there we go. You can add that to the list. We'll count that as number one. We have ourselves a set, but he needs more monsters. Come on, Strong. Can't be strong without friends. There you go. That's a strong card right there. Giant Orc. Strong, uh, giant. Oh, Pinch Hopper does work in the grave, right? Oh, it doesn't matter if there's no insect in the hand. This is your last turn, Ricky, before game one ends. And it looks like Strong Juku, the elementary school, is going to beat a high schooler. Oh, he got his boss! Yo! He top decked the ritual spell at the last second! The boss monster of Ricky, the Javelin Beetle, is here! And that beetle can knock out any of these strong cards! The problem is, Megamorph works both ways. So, it kind of depends on if the AI knows how to use it. The AI knows how to use it. And there we go, the strong monster ain't so strong anymore. There it goes, and the winner is Strong Jukyu! It was cool to see it. We got to see the boss monster. Technically both, but yeah. There we go. Last second. Didn't matter because triple Megamorph. Now let's go ahead and get into game number two and let's see if Ricky can get his ritual a little faster this time or if the opponent will get skill drain a little faster to wreck his, uh, yeah, wreck his friend here. Oh, wow. He's skill drain immediately. I would give up if my name, I would give up if my name was Ricky. It wouldn't be worth it. Skill drainage is way too strong. Alright. Strong Juku's deck is pretty interesting, and it's going to be able to pull off some nice combos, especially if he uses skill drain, good use of skill drain. Flying Kamakiri still works. That is a graveyard effect because it hit the grave when it died. And there we go. 800 damage. That's a graveyard effect. <clears throat> No, Flying Kamikiri is not strong enough, but maybe you have an equip spell. A lot of insect users do use insect equip spells, and that might help out. No luck there. Elite Goblins are going to have a lot of fun using the skill drain, making sure they don't have to go into defense mode. Howling Insect, he still got it! Ricky, if he has anything, he's got special summons. And those special summons are keeping him in the duel, but he's getting outmatched in terms of power. His attack stats are just too low. These insects do not pack a punch. And the ones he do that do pack a punch are not stronger than anything Strong has. Strong's level 4 monsters are on a different level. And he just keeps drawing more of them. Alright, so we're going to go in. Life is good. Easy destruction. Life is good. But again, he just keeps getting them. How does he keep getting them? Pinch Hopper, that's his last hope. Has to be a good card though. Pinch Hoppy, using the gray. Gr Karochi Kuwagata, come on man. Where's the big Unfading stuff? X and again, thank you for subscribing with pride. I appreciate you, Unfading X. How does this keep happening? We have ourselves a set. Unless you have a big shield guard now, you're done for. And you're an insect boy, so I'm going to assume you don't. Pinch Hopper can't save you when your biggest thing is advanced ritual art. Insect Knight usually is a big monster, but it ain't big enough anymore. Ricky needs his ritual monster or bust. His ritual monster beats everything. It's actually stronger than everything that Strong has in his deck. Except Megamorph, you know. But that's not in his hand right now. Oh, damn. Yeah, it's looking bad now. It's looking bad now. The five mighty beatdown. Flying Kamakiri. The next attack is for game. Indomitable Fighter Lele. Call the Haunted wouldn't even save him. 
it wouldn't even... Oh, it does, because Insect Knight is just barely strong enough. But this next attack can't be stopped, and that is it. Ricky's Insect deck gets defeated by the strongest person here, Strong Juke You. All right. Good job, Strong Juke You. Uh, the only way I'm going to be able to hit partnership is if I stream eight times a month, which is what we're going to attempt. So I need you guys to show up every Saturday and Sunday, and then maybe, just maybe, I'll be a partner on YouTube. Or Twitch. I'm already a partner on YouTube. Whatever. Let's go ahead and let's move forward. So, Strong GQ moves forward. The next duel is Lara, the character that blew my mind the most out of any other character, because we actively watched her commit Sudoku. <laughs> I know this. Just a funny way to say it, but there we go. And Minion Serpent, who we have not seen since the Champions Carnival. This is a character we actually did have in the tournaments before, but he has not been here since the Champions Carnival. He was one of the first gang characters we've ever showed off, and there's a lot of gangs now, but he's one of the originals. I'm looking for Lara as we speak, and then we're going to start this duel and have some fun. Alright, there she is. Let's go ahead and do this starting duel and let's uh see who wins i'm gonna go find their faces lara is ready to duel minion serpent is ready to duel he did upgrade his deck at least yeah he did it's a lot better than it used to be allure of darkness the only one that might not have upgraded their decks are yang and sammy trunks those are the only ones you might not want to might not want to bet on anyone else or Georgie, but George, well, Georgie did get an upgrade, but he didn't use it right. Um, ooh, okay, Magical Marionette could be very good. That's really good so far. Eh, no, no, no. Well, I mean, that's good to get. That's actually really good. White Bacon gets you a Skull Servant. Okay, yeah. Okay, White Man, why not? There you go. Now we just need some uh, good stuff here. Minion Serpent seems like he's in a good position, but he might be having some trouble given all the stuff that I saw in her hand. White Mare has been thrown away in order to bring out uh, the girl with 2200 defense. Mirage and Nightmare is going to be an amazing card as this combos with her Skull Servants really well. And it was the only reason she won one of her duels back on the moon. And it looks like we're going for Piercing Idea. And it works! Yeah, even if the monster can't be destroyed, piercing still works. Very good play by Minion Serpent. Used the brain on that one. He used his brain. All right, well, we're just going to throw away Priya. Jesus Christ, pick your skull. There we go. That's Well, you shouldn't have picked that one, but... Oh! Oh, no! No, no, no. Yes. 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 No! Maybe. No. Okay, that was weird. All right, that was a weird turn, but um, things did not go so well for Laura by the end of it. It doesn't really matter, though. Laura does have Mirage of Nightmare, which is going to make sure she can get another King of the Skull Servants really easily. And now we're going to go ahead and we're going to bring back a monster that's really nice because it, it can do piercing. And we have a monster with 28 base attack stat now, always. And he's going to go in with 2,800, and Laura has one turn before she loses. Oh, God, my voice. <clears throat> She didn't choose to throw away premature. Oh, well, Mirage and Nightmare stupid then. MST Clutch. Oh! Oh, what a play! Normally, it's a bad idea to do this, but maybe she has some good spells and traps she needs to keep, and I wouldn't blame her if she did. King of the Skull Servants! 7,000 attack! It went the wrong way! No! Nightburn, thanks for the sub, but Laura, she, did, she had it! She had a comeback, and it did not matter. Where was the... I thought she didn't let her cards go away because she had, like, a Harpies or something. Or she had... Well, she did have MST. She used it on that card. But what are you going to do? Let's go to game number two. Minion Serpent, great job. Great job. All right, Game Master. We'll see you tomorrow, all right? I'll, I'll hold you to that. I'll find you. No, I'm joking. Happy to have you here. All right, so let's see what happens. We got Mother Grizzly. That's a really good start for our Minion Serpent guy. This is also a good start because this card does piercing, which means she can't stall him. Uh, does he go for the piercing or does he go for two attacks? That's my question. Two attacks, okay. Mystic Tomatoes, really nice. Alright, Mystic Tomatoes effect will activate. And that's an attack mode. Yes, it is uh, a weird choice, but, you know, to each their own. Maybe they have some sort of revival card. You never know. Life is good. We got uh, just some defensive cards. 
They need that one white... Uh, yeah, that one's good, too. I was going to say, they need that one monster that gets more cards uh, in the grave. But it looks like Laura's running out of time. It's okay, though. If she gets a King of the Skull Servants right now, she's good. She'll have 2k attack, right? So she's she's solid. Y'all, why would you even like Laura? No, I'm joking. I just feel bad. I feel bad that she couldn't do it. Ah, uh, <laughs> I feel real bad. Wow, she did way better in game number one where she totally could have won. But in game number two, Minion Serpent just destroyed her. Get her out of here. Honestly, I think AI shouldn't use Skull Servant decks. That has to be a human. Humans got to use them. So let's go ahead and let's uh, knock them out of here. Very quick duels. I don't think we've seen a game three today. <laughs> I feel really sad. We haven't seen a game three today. Even though the decks have shown they could go to game three, except Magic Cylinder gone the way. Uh, they could go to game three, but uh, just didn't happen. The next duel is Gorgon of Domino High, a school that has had a lot of losses ever since uh, Yugi and gang left. And then we have Saika, Koi Saika Koinata from the American Academy. So let's see who wins. Will it be Saika or will it be Gorgon? Gorgon, for those of you that already have forgotten, uses a Guardian Sphinx. That is his boss monster, and it's really helpful. Saika, for those of you that don't know the manga, uses a reptile deck that uses Pluto. That's not the Pluto is not from the manga. I did that, did that part, but whatever. Uh, let's see here, Gorgon, Gorgon, Gorgonzola. There he is. All right, let's go ahead and start this duel, and let's see how Domino High student this Domino High student does against a Dual Academy student. Well, an American Academy student. Still called Dual Academy, just the American campus of it. So, Gorgon is ready to duel. Oh, she drew all of her tributes. She, she's, she actually drew all of her tributes. That is so bad. That is actually so bad. How? Allure of Darkness can fix this. Allure of Darkness can fix it. Oh, she drew all of them! The game is intentionally trying to screw her. I watched that. I watched that. She drew all of them. The game is actually trying to screw her right now. Okay, 1400 attack comes through. Yes, yeah, Psycho will be there tomorrow. Yeah, we can count the S2. We're gonna count it. We're gonna count it. Snake Rain could help. That could help a lot. No, you Snake Rain first! You Snake Rain first and then you Monster Aborn! What are you doing, kid? Oh, I'm, I'm starting to really believe that the uh, any sort of dual academy just hurts the kids. It doesn't teach them Yu-Gi-Oh. Oh, Dark Illusion. At least she has a card to protect her alligator card. All right. And we got Dark Alligator protected, and it will go through. Mystic Tomato might die, but it will bring out a friend for its death. Let's see what kind of friend we get, Mystic Tomato. And the al Dark Alligator token. Is that really? It's called Alligator token, right? And the Alligator token is here. Mr. Gorgon Man's like, holy crap, this is going to be hard. Now we're going to get a summon in here. Gorgon Egg, why not? I don't know why he wanted it. It's only in his deck because it had Gorgon in the name. I was going to say, this has to have an effect. There we go. That That is the effect, apparently. It's cost you a lot of life points to pull that. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, no, he doesn't know. Oh, he doesn't know. Oh, no. Oh, no. She got her Lamia. Oh, no. No. <laughs> they can do whatever they want. Lamia is actually a card from the manga that she used. That's a legit card from her the manga. Bye. Good job. You suck. I think 5,400 attack is the record of the day. <laughs> no, wait. 7,000 on King of the Skull Servants. Thank you for the sub. I appreciate that. Everyone, evil Dragon King Anata, she just obliterated this man. Lamia and the Dark Alligator being able to draw a card and search a card is just too much. It's just too much. These Domino High students suck. Ricky tried. I'll give Ricky, a, like, he tried. He got his Javelin Beetle out. The rest of them suck. Georgie sucks. Gorgon sucks. I mean, this is, he has one more chance, but he sucks. He needs Guardian Sphinx. Get your Guardian Sphinx. She had such a weird hand, too. All right, Mystic Tomato, damage equals Reptile is kind of scary. You got to watch out for that one. Tech <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just, it's just funny. 
It's just fun. Anytime I see that card, I just, I just, I puts a smile on my face. It really does. Oh my god. Of course. Oh, hi there, special summon. Yep, you may have zero attack on Mystic Tomato, but the rest of the monsters can still do work. Saika's doing real good, and maybe she's showing off that American Academy does have some hands. Call of the Haunted comes through if you're just using it to crash again, ever to die again. It's not. If you used that for Guardian Sphinx, I would have respected it, even though it would not have worked. Uh, at least it would have been a play. But you used it for this, and it's just not such a good idea. There's only a hundred on Gorgon. That's because most of you, most of you understand. Oh, here comes the Dark Alligator, and the Dark Alligator is like, "Hey, look at me! I got myself a token, and the token's gonna help with the Mystic Tomato problem." And the Mystic Tomato's like, there's no problem here. You don't got a lot of life points left, Gorgon. And I'm going to tell you right now, your Guardian Sphinx won't work. Unless you have a reliable Guardian, which does run. Um, so you need to you need to think of something else. No. Defense Gold will not save you, sir. That Dark Alligator card is really freaking good. Des Feral Limp might be coming back. Nope, we're going to go with the Mamba. Gorgon not that great? I agree. Anyone from Domino High is not that great. The only one I'll give a little credit to is maybe Ricky, because Ricky at least tried. Every other student, not so much. Even Georgie messed up his... Oh, shit. Well, hold... Give, give the kid a chance. Hold it. Okay. Uh, Guardian Sphinx is now in his hand. We could say that. Oh, I gotta love it. Brain control's good too, but you gotta love it. All right, Dark Alligator. Oh yeah, just, just, just end. The, don't, don't summon it now, but just end this deal. No, don't summon it now. You saw, you saw him get brain control. Oh, is it because you have Solemn Judgment? And you do not care. I think it's because they have Solemn Judgment and they don't care. All right, this should be fun. Attack the moon. It did not hit Solemn Ju You didn't even try. You didn't even try? If you're not even going to try, you might as well look, kick his ass. Get get rid of him. Get absolutely rid of him. T oh. But God said no. You knew she had God. You should have got rid of God last turn with brain control or something. Even block attack. I would have taken it. God says no. You're right, it can't work on that card, but block attack would work. Try to gotta get rid of that god says no. And Evil Dragon Anata has done it. Psycho. The uh Chimerican Academy student will be moving on. At least we got rid of Domino High real quick. Those Domino High students are real disappointing. They are just big disappointments. Alright, they go there like, oh man, the King of Games used to go to our school. Two of them did. It's so cool. And then they show up and they all just suck. Every single one of them. All right. The next duel is going to be Bella, one of the Arcadia Movement children, taking on one of the gang members, Minion Jaws. Bella versus Minion Jaws. All right. So let's see here. Bella is here to try and find some friends today. Friends that also have psychic potential. Minion Jaws, on the other hand, uh, he's here for the thousand dollars. Sneaking in with it. him and his friends sneaking in with their student IDs. Even though we can clearly tell that one is smoking and one they, they're just they're not 17. <laughs> they are not 17. There's no way. Ain't no way. Alright, so Minion Jaws. Oh, that is not Minion Jaws. Why is that? That is Johnny Steps, but it says Minion Jaws. Shit. Does this one say Minion Jaws? Oh my god. The face is messed up. I can fix this live. I know I can. I know I can fix it. Don't don't look at it. Don't look at it. I can fix it live. I'm going to fix it live. There's no way I'm living with this mistake. I swear to God. I'm having trouble fixing it live, but I will. There he is. Look at that. Cooper's a freaking genius. All right. Emergency teleport comes in. And we got our synchro summon. First synchro summon of the tournament. This is going to freak out some kids for sure. Minion jaws must be shook after that. 
And Magico Android is going to work together with uh, Silent Psychic Wizard, and that's too much damage. Damn. All right, Magico Android's going to heal for a lot. That's 1,200. So, uh, Jaws, you got anything better than this? Not looking like it. All right. Magico Android is her boss monster. That's the strongest card she has in terms of attack points. Yeah, Big Jaws isn't going to last. The damage is coming through. Back when we did our, car our Champions Carnival, he only had like a couple uh, fish cards. Like Great White and like his fusion monsters. But not this time. This time he has better cards. Monster Reborn. I guess you can use it to get rid of the genetic women woman. I guess. Uh, you know what? You did 100 damage compared to their 10,000 life points. Great job, kid. Great job. Now get ready to get Psychic Jumped. All right, we got ourselves a Psychic Jumper. Psychic Jumper is going to try. You might as well, because you were going to lose either way, so you might as well. All right, and we hit Genetic Woman. Looks like Magical Android is going to end this duel. Minion Jaws has fallen. Finally, one of the Arcadia kids are doing good. I don't know why it's taken this long for them to start popping off. And this was the first one to actually pull off a Synchro Summon. So, we're going to go ahead and start the duel again. Let's get into game number two, and let's see what these kids can do. Oh, kids. One of them is... No, nah, one of them definitely doesn't look like he's 17. Look at him. Another Psychic Jumper. She's very good at getting that card. That card is super helpful. All right. Wish we could see Joey come back. We, we already did. That was like two weeks ago. That was during the GX tournament. He beat Jim Crocodile Cook. It was hype as shit. All right, Psychic Jumper is here, and they're gone. That's a shame. Serene Psychic. Oh, he's not gone, actually. He comboed. Toriental Tribute uh, combos with Toriental Reborn. It does burn, and he doesn't lose his monster. Oh, well, no, that's not fair. It's not worth either. I would not have done that. There we go. Dark Hole comes through. Call of the Haunted. Sure. Call of the Haunted brings back the Psychic Lady. And Emergency Teleport. Are we going to Synchro Summon? Nope, that's level four. Oh, unless this card has an effect I don't know about. Ah, yes, that works, 100%. And there we go. We do have a Synchro Summon. Our boss monster has uh, arrived. Good job, Bella. Bella got back her magical android, and it does get stopped. It doesn't do anything else. It just stops the attack, but I would have I would have let that attack go through. That attack was fine. You could take it. Depth Shark is like his only hope. Is that is that its name? I want to make sure I'm getting these right. Depth Shark. We're out of my era of Yu-Gi-Oh! now. Once we hit the 5D stuff going on, I, I just... And, you know, some of the effects are very basic stuff. Um, it, it's just... It's too it's too far for me. I, I gotta keep up by looking. Oh, he got his boss! It's Jaws Man! His boss does beat hers in terms of attack points. So, Jaws Man is here. Here, get a, get, here, get a close-up. I want you to look at it. Look, look at this crap. Look at this disgusting creature. It's pure agony to look at. It's just... Ugh. Disgusting. But I build the decks. I know, but I don't know what the cards do. <laughs> Instant Fusion comes through, which is 100% a waste unless he plans on using it for tribute. The Deep Sea Shark is here. Mother Grizzly. Oh, it's the power of Jaws Man. Even though he doesn't realize that doesn't matter if he can't even attack because of swords. Swords makes them play worse. What are you going to do about it? And here we go. We got ourselves Psychic Jumper. What a combo. Jaws Man is on the wrong side. Jaws Man is going to attack. You know what? It still did the right thing, though. It still attacked Bella at the end of the day. It may be on the wrong side of the field, but it attacked Bella. That sword is really going to hurt, though. You need some sort of... Yeah, it's not working out so well. Oh, crap. Pandaborg is all right. Is Pandaborg a water monster? God damn it. It just happens to be a water monster. That's so funny. Mother Grizzly is uh, just obliterated. Do you have anything better than Mother Grizzly? No, you do not. Psychic Jumper's like, hey, I did my job. I'm, I, I stole the guy. Mother Grizzly, we have one trap card. That trap has to be a difference maker because we're in a bad spot right now. He can't Synchro Summon, so he, he, having the Tuner Monster doesn't help. All right, Mother Grizzly's last Mother Grizzly gets Depth Shark. Depth Shark wasn't on the field during standby phase, so it's gone. And attack goes through. Goodbye, monster. You got one, you got one trap and one monster left. Make it count. That was the best you could do. 
That was the best you could do, and I feel bad. Jaws has no chance with his monster on the wrong side of the field. He ha she got two Panda Borgs to buff Jaws Man again. That blows my mind. And Jaws Man, his own boss monster, is going to knock him down to 800. One Ukazi, folks. Where's the Ukazi? I want to see it. I want to see someone draw it. One trap. He already used Magic Cylinder, though, so it won't be able to reverse the damage. Genetic Woman brings back this card as if it was necessary. Jaws Man goes in for game, and Jaws Man ends the duel. Bella obliterated her opponent. Good job from Bella, one of the only Arcadia people to show up today. All right. So, with that, we're going to get back to our bracket really quick. I want you all to take a look at who's up next. The next duelists that are going to be fighting are going to be... Let's see... Light Su Kiko. That is a very powerful duelist from the minor league tournament. She is one of the four kings at uh, OCG Elementary. So we'll see if Light Su Kiko will win today against. Oh, poor Sam. Oh, poor Sammy. That is not a fun matchup for Sammy. I feel bad. I actually feel bad. Sammy's going to die. S Sammy Trunks. Look, man. Let today be the day you learn that you should just throw away the elephant deck and think of something else. And, well, he didn't think of it in the first place. The elephant deck was given to him. Just just realize the guy screwed you over. He, he got your hopes up for nothing. All right, Light Tsukiko is ready to duel. Sammy Trunks is ready to duel. Let's have some fun today, folks, and watch Sammy get obliterated. Light Tsukiko's hand is just average. Nothing wrong with that. Hey, one of his elephant car. Hey, went the wrong way. And that's A-OK. -okay. So let's see one of his elephant cards. He has elephant statue of blessings. Sure. Harpy's Feather Duster won't allow you to keep your rush recklessly, which he will use to protect himself. Even though she does not currently... Well, she would have. Freya would have helped. Freya would have helped. Only five people bet on Sammy. That's okay. This tournament, I was expecting more, you know, not game threes because they're just so like, oh, Pro Duelist. Oh, OCG. Oh, Minor League. Oh, Domino High. Like, it's just such a big mix. Oh, but you know what? That's actually a pretty good card. Let's see it. He's got his big Tusk Mammoth. Monsters your opponent controls cannot attack the turn they are summoned. That's kind of nice. Oh, doesn't matter. It sucks to get rid of Marshmallow on like that, but it do not matter. Are you going to attack with Marshmallow? Oh, thank God you have this. Yeah. Get back your angel. Do not attack with Marshmallow. Just hit, put it, set it, you know, make sure your life points are safe, and that's about it. Hey, don't blame anybody for not betting on Sammy. Sammy sucks. Harpies. Okay, Harpies gets rid of Shining Angel. That's really good. Yeah, OCG Elementary actually teaching them kids. Marshmallow's going to do its job by keeping the field nice and healthy. However, something I, we've noticed about Light Tsukiko, she hasn't drawn any of her boss monsters. Yeah, she's struggling to get her boss monsters. That's kind of interesting. It doesn't typically happen. Normally, she gets them pretty easily. The giant Rat and the Elephant are working together to destroy the Marshmallow's. They will fail in their endeavor, but at least they're trying. There we go. As long as one remains, you can't win. Light Tsukiko on her top deck gets Nova Summoner, a very nice card. Limit Reverse is weirdly used. I would not know. No. 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 Absolutely not. Oh, God. Oh, God. Why? Why would you do this? He got his flying elephant. That is, no, put it in defense mode and pop it. You just killed yourself. I have never seen the AI do that. That is really bad. Oh, it can go in defense mode. It can go in defense mode and pop itself. It's the right thing to do. She should, she should do that now. I mean, it's already too late, but damn. Light Tsukiko through the duel. A hundred percent. That was the first throw. Of the tournament. A hundred percent that was a throw. Okay, Sammy fans, rejoice. 
And let's get into the next duel. No, rule number one, never trust the AI. Never, ever, ever. Never trust Lara. We've seen the shit she does. Never trust Light. Although, no, Light did amazing in the minor league. This is crazy. Oh, she got one of her boss monsters this time. Now, see, this would have gone a lot better if she the reason she would limit reverse was for a tribute. Oh, dear God. Her hand is way better this time. The rat is good. The rat is good. We're finally getting a game three. What, you don't think Sammy could take it? He beats Dunames by 50. Flying Elephant exists. Do you forget? Flying Elephant is too damn good. It's too damn good. All right, Harpy's Feather to stop any trap cards. You're actually going to go for it. You're actually going to go for Zaborg. Oh, he misplayed. That's probably the monster he chose. Although I didn't see which monster he chose, to be fair. Or she chose, I should say. Yeah, okay. Mini boss monster Zaborg is here, and it does a very fine job of destroying the opponent. Flying Elephant has been stolen. It's on the wrong side of the field. It is on the wrong side of the field, everybody. The end phase is here. It doesn't choose? Good to know. Dark Hole comes through. Goodbye, Elephant That Floats. Elephant That Floats survives. If that elephant does damage. <laughs> if that elephant does damage, my god. All right, Nova Summoner is here. Okay, it will not do damage. Calm down. It won't do no damage. Nimble Mangas will protect the field. Sammy ain't leaving. Sammy ain't leaving. You guys got excited as if we were going to see some sort of crazy thing happen. Never again. Never again. Sammy got his... Okay, mini boss monster is here. The mini boss monster does its job. Its name is the Big Tusk Mammoth. It's nice because it slows down your opponent even if they do pull off a, you know, tribute monster. So this premature can bring back Zabor, but Zabor can't attack the turn it's summoned, so it can't defeat it. And Hoshin again just died for no reason. All right. Though next turn, that, that yeah, that big Toast Mammoth's going to die. Giant Rat is here. Giant Rat is going in. Piercing damage. Oh, wait, that monster. No way, that trap weakens the monster. Uh-oh, Zaborg is getting kind of low in attack points there. Oh, no. Zaborg isn't strong enough anymore. The Mammoth can beat. Is Sammy winning? Freya, Freya, help. What are you doing? Use Freya. Oh, it's not a fairy. Fair enough, but still. Freya is safe thanks to Nova Summoner. Okay, yeah, I know you're in trouble. You're in so much trouble. Light Tsukiko of OCG Elementary is in trouble. Flying Elephant is here. Piercing damage is real. Weaken the monster yet again. Nova Summoner shall summon a Marshmallow, but piercing damage is real. Weaken the monster yet again. And Zaborg is dead. Light Tsukiko, draw Karaz or die. Draw Karaz or die. It's over. It's all. It's a hundred percent over. This duel is. Over. We're about to see a 2-0 going the way no one expected it to. Sammy Trunks with his elephant cards are going in, and his elephant cards are gonna win him this duel. Flying elephant, go! Light Sukiko of OCG Elementary has fallen. She did amazing in the minor league tournament, and she's fallen apart in the youth cup. All right, that was interesting and not expected at all. That wasn't supposed to happen. Definitely off the script. We need to get back to the script, though, so let's go ahead and get into our uh, next fight, and hopefully they actually follow it this time. What the fuck just happened? Why would she pick Marshmallow in that first duel? The next duel is Yang versus Alda V Stormer. Yang uses the Dark Lucius deck. Alda V Stormer is known for her Dark Storm Dragon. All right, so I'm looking for these characters right now. Then we're gonna start the duel. So get excited, get ready. We haven't seen Alda duel since. Uh, oh, we haven't seen either of these characters duel since uh, the mi minor league. All right, let's go ahead and get into this duel. Let's start it up. Yang versus Alda. It looks like Alda's ready to duel, and Yang is ready to duel. Uh, 
That looks like a brick to me. Oh god, did you just spend a dark hole on a sonic shooter? Why? You have a brick. The dark hole isn't gonna save you from a brick. It'll save you later. It'll save you later. Heavy Storm! No, you just lost two really good cards. Monster Aboard! Sonic Shooter returns. It's like you didn't even do anything. Granted, it's not worth a Monster Aboard, but whatever. It does its job. 13, 17, 3k damage. Alda is going in. Alright, try again, Miss V... Uh, try again, Miss Yang. You have nothing to premature. You haven't drawn anything. You haven't drawn anything yet. Did you just use that on a Sonic Shooter? I guess you had to. I'm, I apologize. I mean, you didn't have to. You would have lived, but now you can still premature burial in case you get a graceful charity or something. Holy crap. I can't believe we're going to see a duel end just because of Duck. Sonic Duck. Oh, you got the level 4 version way too late because you already lost everything. You already lost it all. None of this matters now. You needed to start the duel with that when you still had Rush Recklessly. Oh dear god, it's, it's already over, Alda. Don't go too hard. Oh my god. Alright, Alda has uh, proceeded to bully the opponent. And game number one will go to Alda. Really bad opening hand from... Uh, from... Uh, what's her name? From Yang. The one problem with Yang, though, is she also got Heavy Storm, and that really sucks. Still, really bad opening hand. You never want to see Dark Hole in the opening hand, because the AI can't help themselves unless their name is... Uh, who won the freaking uh, Arcadia expansion tournament? Nino? Unless their name is Nino. Alright. We got a flying Kamakiri. That's always fun. People love... That's also a really bad hand, by the way. They just keep... Where are those monsters? Where are the actual monsters you should be using? Windstorm. Interesting use of it. Alda's chat is definitely going wild, but not ours. Our chat doesn't seem to like Alda. And that's fine by me. You don't have to like Alda. And big damage goes in, 1,800. Giant Germ could destroy the opponent, but it might be better just to try and uh, be careful. Could Monster Reborn, yeah, if you want to try and pull off your combo, it's it's doable. And then you could use the Giant Germ for safety instead. Dark Lucius level 6, yep, expected. Dark Lucius level 6 will not get its effect, though, because it was summoned by a Tribute Summon. Therefore, it has no chance of evolving into level 8. At best, it's a 1,700 level 6 monster with no effect. That is not good. Hi, Harpy's brother. Harpy's brother tag teaming with Flying Kamakiri going out of here just to get a Hunter out. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah, that's about right. That's not good. I thought Taihon number two at least... Yeah, I did have 1,700 attack, but I at least had 1,900 defense. Oh, that... Oh, if you had level up earlier! If you had it one turn earlier! You actually... And you had guy power! Yang, where were all of these cards? Why do you keep drawing only your boss monsters and not the cards to get the boss monsters? How did you get these bad of hands? There's a thousand dollars on the line. And you drew the worst cards in your deck to top deck. They're supposed to stay in the deck to be... That's like drawing, if you're Chaz, and drawing two Arm Dragon level 7s. Like, it's just... It's not what you want to see. No, level up and then use guy power! What are you doing? You have to anyway! Level up and then use Gaia power. What the f is wrong with you? They may be called Dark Lucius, but they're Earth monsters, you dumb idiot Yang. All right, well, you know what? That's fine. Screw you. Uh, who needs you? Let's move on. All the V-Stormer gets a free victory. Let us move on. Nothing to see here, folks. Nothing to see here. All right. We're getting out of that first bracket, though. There's only oh, wait a minute. I'm excited for this next fight. Wait a minute. <laughs> oh, she's a fa Yang's a fan of Alda, so she threw. You know what? That, that would make sense. The next duel is going to be Mickey Hops, son of Macy Hops, versus Min Yin Kaizo. All right, Mickey Hops versus Min Yin Kaizo. Let's do this. Now, for the, he has a lot to live up to because his mother did go top four. Or even, I think she might have gone third. I don't remember. She did get, like, top three in the minor league tournaments. I know she went to semis. So, let's see if Mickey can live up to that. Even though I feel like his tournament's going to be a lot harder than what she had. I'm looking for Mickey right now. Mickey, there he is. 
All right, Mickey is ready. Blazing Impachi is scary. That's a little too strong for Mickey here. Mickey needs something good. That's, like I said, it's a little too strong for Mickey here. We'll see what he does. Double Blazing Impachi from Kaizo. That's a little too much for the buddy here. Minion Kaizo's doing good work getting rid of these rats because they are nothing to him. There is a play in your hand right now. I, I understand. There is a play, buddy. I just don't know if you're going to be able to pull it off. That's not a bad card. Ayers Rock Sunrise is the play, but you're not willing to do it. The AI has decided it's not time. Super Rush Recklessly can be used, though it's not necessary. Blazing Impachi still does its job. Honestly, you just got lucky, Mickey, that they didn't play another monster. They seem to be bricked already. All right, Ayers Rock Sunrise to try and start controlling the duel. One problem with using this play is TT. Yeah, I was going to say, there's already back row back there. So, Oh, oh, premature. There's back row back there, so it was dangerous to make that play. You're not going to be able to keep Dark Zebra in attack mode because you couldn't keep it. Oh! You just want to do big damage. Never mind. You're not going to be able to do that in attack mode. Yeah, my cats are good. My Roxy girl's sleeping right there. I see her. She's right there. You know what? For two seconds, I'll move the camera. She's right there. That's my cat. She's sleeping in a ball. All right. And I'm back. So, Charcoal and Pachi in attack mode, because why not? Is that the... What? What was that? I'm sorry. What? What? I I'm sorry. Kaizo, what? What are you... What are you doing here? What was that play? And why did it do something? Who is this kid? <laughs> oh, he's not even a kid. He he's not even supposed to be here. Kaizo's bullying Mickey. Kaizo's bullying Mickey. Oh, God, it's Molten Behemoth. No. Kaizo came to play, I guess. Mickey, draw something or die. Even though you already drew a bunch of monster cards. Yeah. Oh, that's all right, actually. Don't pick the zebra. Damn it. Okay. Okay. Check his hands. I might have to. Mickey is trying to stay up. He did top deck a pretty good card. And his opponent is going to try and play defensively. And Dark Zebra is going to, you know, get his downside on you right now. Ah! Oh, you drew that way too late. If you had that in the opening hand, you could have had it earlier. Damn. Damn, damn, damn. Rabbit Dragon is here, but it do not matter. Premature Burial for Blazing Impachi. It's such a good card. And we have a Tribute Summon for Wood... What? What? Did you use Woodborg in attack mode to destroy Mickey's freaking Dark Zebra? I told you not to pick that Zebra. Oh my god, Mickey, are you serious? Why were they right next to each other? Why in the deck were they right next? What are you doing now? I, oh my, wait, what is this game? What is this game? This duel is so bad. What is this? That's your last hope. Rescue Rabbit, come out. It's not enough. You don't have enough attack points. Mickey, you don't have enough attack points. Your rabbit card isn't good enough. You lose by 50. Why didn't you trip? Oh, because you had to summon rabbit. Whatever. Why? Why? You lost by 50, dude. Oh, beautiful. All right. First win goes to Minion Kaizo. Good job, Kaizo. He was the right-hand man, and he still is, of Diesel Kane. So he's probably going to be doing good today. Let's go ahead and get into game number two. Rescue Rabbit is meant for XYZs? No, Rescue Rabbit can do a lot of things. It's meant for it's meant to, you know, get you two monsters and do damage. That's You do know if they Harpy's Feather Duster, you lost the duel, Mickey. You, your mom didn't teach you well enough. I'm going I'm just going to say it. Uh, letting the giant rat die was a better idea, Mickey. You, you might be in some trouble, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, his mom's watching in the stands going, No! Why are you- That kid is smoking! He's not a child! He's literally smoking while fighting my child! He shouldn't be in the youth cup! What is happening here? She's about to throw hands. Oh good, he got his koala card. Thank god. Mickey Hops gets koala. Yeah. Beast soul swap for fun. Sure, you do you, man. As long as you're having fun. 1800 damage goes through. Mickey is now in the lead, even though his back row is all he's got. 
whereas Kaizo's got all these cards. Charcoal in attack mode for Creature Seizure! You lost your Koala card! Impachi has returned! The heal is massive! Minion Kaizo actually has a brain. He actually uses strategies with his deck, and I gotta admit, it's kinda cool. The problem is, you know, Mickey, uh, Mickey's just trying his best, man. Horn of the Phantom Beast tries to do its best. It will give you... An, uh, you know what? It lets you draw a card. That's the most important part. That's one of your better cards. That's good. That's good. That's Soul Resurrection. That's bad. Especially if they have a tribute monster. You gotta watch out for those. They don't have a tribute monster. So they're just using it to hold the field for now. That's fine. The fully uh, developed frontal prefrontal cortex advantage. That's not fair. How dare you? This is supposed to be the Youth Cup. All right, draw a card. Dark Zebra is good. Another Horn of the Phantom Beast would be good, but the AI is too dumb to play too. All right, setting cards. Dark Zebra would be good right about now. An 18 beater, solid or gritting, as you can do either. Yeah, as long as Dark Zebra has friends, it's a good card. Is it cheating to think? It is if you're 18 or older. This is supposed to be a youth cup. He snuck in, and I know he snuck in. All right, Harpies is good, but your opponent hasn't used a single spell or trap that stays on the field yet. And Pachi holds. He just needs his tribute. Woodborg and Pachi or Molten Behemoth would hold the field. He needs his tribute monster. I did say it. I did say it. And I told you to set that other Horn of the Phantom Beast, Mickey. I warned you. I warned you. Woodborg and Pachi holds you back. And now he can wait until he gets his card in order to uh, do some real fun uh, summons here. Yeah, that'll do it. Everyone say hello to his boss monster. It's time for Dark Bolter the Terrible. Now, he would only do that if he had a trap ready for it, but he has Dark Bolter the Terrible here. It typically is a really good card, but right now it's a little weak. He didn't know about the Harpies, but it doesn't matter. He pays a thousand life points and Harpies be damned. Yep, Dark Bolter says no spells. What, what, what did he just say? Is only once per turn? Is that why? It's only once per turn. All right. And Dark Bolter, even if you did have a trap, yeah, it probably didn't matter anymore. The Koala is going to go there. Impachi is gone, and your life points will join them. Pot of Greed's a hell of a card to get. It looks like Mickey Hops has got this duel. Unless that trap activate. No, it did not. All right. Dark Bolter was not good enough. Yeah, it was a horrible move. I thought he had a trap to protect himself. I thought he had a plan. He didn't have a plan. So, Minion Kaizo just falls. We're going to go ahead and get into the next duel, everybody. It's game number three. This is our first game three, and it's the final fight of round one. It's been over an hour. You know, it's been it's been over an hour of tournament time, not ta not counting the intro. And we, this is the first game three. All right, Giant Rats, good reasoning. Oh, boy. I don't know what number we picked. It wasn't four. You should have said four. We saw his deck. He has level one, four, and five. That's about it. Vampire Koala is real good. Not good enough. In, okay, we got Charcoal and Pachi and regular and Pachi. They're working together. Kaizo holds the field and he needs Blazing and Pachi to beat the Koala. He got Blazing and Pachi. Wait, don't put them all in attack mode. Don't put them all. Why would you put them all in attack mode? At least, I understand in Pachi, but not freaking Charcoal and Pachi. That should not be in attack mode. That should not be in attack mode right now. I am not okay with that. Oh boy. Rescue Rabbit with Wild Nature's release can be real fun. And those monsters are fine with it. I would do something else. But oh! Oh, you don't care! Oh, you do not care! Mickey is done with this bullcrap! He heals 4,000 life points! He does 15... Oh, wait, no. 900 burn. He does 900 burn. He's gonna end this goddamn duel. He's trying to. He is trying to end this duel. He's so done with this. Mickey Hops has won in an extremely fast fashion on turn four. That's what Mickey's deck can do. <laughs> he didn't do so good in game one. Good job to Minion Kaizo in that one. But first game three of the day means we actually had some good duelists here. Let's get them out of here. We got to see, well, we didn't get to see Mickey's boss, but we've seen it before. So it's fine. But we saw Kaizo's boss. All right, so Mickey Hops, let's get you, uh, let's get you forward. The next round of fighters is going to include the real problematic ones. Round one only had a couple of the problematic ones. The first duel, oh, we got a classic duel. Bones versus 
Mokuba Kaiba. And you all saw how powerful Mokuba's deck can really be when he fought Georgie. Bones hasn't shown you his improvements, but you got to see a little bit in the in the intro. So anyone that watched the intro got to see it. But other than that, yeah, I'm excited. Bones is my bro. I love Bones. Granted, I wish he didn't have to fight Mokuba. I wish the randomizer would have been a little bit nicer than that. Mokuba's deck is really freaking strong. Especially for a youth cup. Alright, my buddy Bones needs to get, you know, some sort of victory here. It's kind of a screwed up matchup for him. Being forced to fight Mokuba of all people. Alright, well, let's go ahead and let's start this duel and let's see what happens. Yeah, Bones going to the Shadow Realm. That's a good emo for this time. It's uh, probably the right, the right thing to be showing. I'm still going to put my faith in him even though he's at a very big disadvantage against this opponent. But we'll see. Mizuki with United We Stand does not really matter. It's a cool card, don't get me wrong, but it's not going to be worth it, bro. It's not going to be worth it. I warned you. Oh, hi, Seiyaru. Ryu, whatever your name is. Oh, hi, Field Spell. Oh, hi. Oh, well, that's just me. Pyramid of Wonders, thank God. All right, he doesn't have it just yet, but he will. What did you call your Yugimon? Uh... Big G? Are you talking about the gold mammoth? That would be Big G. Mass dragons are holding the field. We've seen him do this before. <clears throat> and he will hold the field. Right now, Mizuki's looking real strong, but it won't matter And once uh, this guy gets his combo. And here we go. Starry time. Yep, there's Starry Night Dragon. That's yes, about right. Monster of Born. Oh, we're going for a basic tribute summon? Is that actually happening? Using a lot of your cards already. You don't need to. You know that, right? All right, everyone. Say hello to the boss monster of Mokuba. Starry Night Dragon. And say goodbye to Mizuki. And say goodbye to Mizuki. Yep. That's gonna hurt. And Mokuba is... I mean, Bones is already below half. He's in... Or around half. Around half. He's, he's in a bad spot. Harvey's Feather could really help out. Because for some reason, they didn't tribute the one monster that was called the Haunted. That was really stupid. And, yeah. Yeah, Jimmy John, stop trying to sell sandwiches. It's not time. Do that um, do that during the breaks, not during the duel itself. Oh, no! Wait a minute. Does this effect still work? Pum Princess has begun! Oh, it's gone. Yep. Damn. Dragon deck. What are you going to do? Pum Princess will not begin. Unless you revive it with Mizuki, which might be viable. You're in trouble here. Yeah, and it's gone. Son of a bitch. All right, we're doing this again. But this time it will result in a big monster coming out. So you got to be careful with what that with what you just did. Oh, no, he actually wants to stall. Interesting. I, I think it's a good idea to stall, especially since your big monster isn't bigger than his. Um, I love me a dragon zombie. I'm not going to lie. I'm a big fan of the dragon zombie. I love a pump princess. She's a good card. Uh, but you got to be super careful how you play this. Because now Starry Night Dragon might just attack Pyramid Turtle to banish it. No, we're going to get Mizuki out of here. I guess that's fine, too. Pyramid Turtle will die again. We'll see if you try something bigger this time, or we're we going to keep it up. We're going to keep it up. And the Axe Dragon Oots uh, refuse to attack, which is a little strange in my opinion. You should be attacking. There's no reason not to. Bones has the great field. I'll give him that, but none of his monsters can handle a Starry Night Dragon. That's just a fact. Or a Seiyar Ryu. No, no, no. Nothing's going to handle it. Not a single monster in this deck. In fact, you're out of Pyramid Turtles. You have to pick one now. Oh, the combo pumpkin dies in front of the pump princess. His daughter watched him die. No, I feel so bad for you. Pyramid of Wonders can help, but it's not enough attack. You already lost your boy. You already lost your boy. Pyramid of Wonders will help with the attack difference, but it's not a big enough gap. Oh, field spells back. That's no good. Mizuki is never going to the grave. They won't allow it. Pump princess, you shouldn't have used your effect to save it. You needed that Pyramid of Wonders. But, Pum Princess, if it could survive, okay, if it could survive, it could start trying to do what Pyramid of Wonders was trying to do. That is interesting. It's not going to work, but that is an interesting card because it fuses with Dragon Zombie, and then it will create the big G. But like I said, it's not going to work. You need to wait. He needed patience. He didn't have any patience. Stamping, yep, every time. 
every time he tries to set up Pump Princess, he ran into an opponent that not only has a very good amount of spell trap destruction, but could just straight up overpower and obliterate him. So he's in a bad spot. It sucks to be a Bones fan today. He got a really bad bracket. But that doesn't mean he's out of it just yet. He just needs to find some sort of combo that works. Monster Born. Uh, game? Game? Why are you in attack mode? Why are you in attack mode? Okay. That's fine, I guess. Yeah, Bone still has an axe of despair somewhere in there. Oh, because there's a tribute. Oh, hi, Kaiser Glider. Oh, no. Oh, no. All the monsters are gone now. You own nothing, sir. He doesn't use in Zombie Clown? I believe he did. It was on the field. Monster Born comes through. Pyramid Turtle is a good choice. At least, you know what, Bones? You did some burn before you lost. Because you lost. But you did some burn before you lost. Good job, buddy. Good job. Literally, you might have stood a chance if your opponent didn't pop all of your back row, but he popped all of your back row. That's the end of the duel. All right, Bones is going to go in now, and he's going to win the duel. Pyramid Turtle does not matter. Dragon Zombie especially does not matter. Um, and Seiya Ryu will go in. The OG boss monster of Mokuba wins in the duel. A tear to my eyes. Bones might actually be able to put, a fight up, uh, put up a fight against some of these people, but Mokuba is like a direct counter for him. Too much spell trap destruction. But we'll go to game two. Maybe Bones will get lucky. Too much spell trap destruction and a huge attack difference. Come on, Bones. I want to believe in you. You got to play a little better this time. I know it's going to be hard, but do it. If Palm Princess doesn't get popped, maybe, but he has so much spell trap destruction, so... He's not going to be able to keep Call of the Haunted. He's not going to be able to keep any of that. Mystic Tomato is a fun choice, because now we get to see who has the better monster by the end. It's a race to see who's stronger. Mass Dragon versus Mystic Tomato. Mass Dragon here. Mystic Tomato here. Eventually, they'll run out of monsters, and we'll see who's truly the strongest. Mass Dragon go first. What other cards can you, uh, you know, throw in there? Mass Dragon, of course. Mystic Tomato. Mystic Tomato. We don't got to worry about these floaters anymore. Now it's just whoever is the strongest. Mass Dragon versus Mystic Tomato. Who will be the strongest? Troop Dragon that is not very strong. Armored Zombie. Classic and good enough. Classic and good enough. All right. Unless they draw their, Ka you know, their Kaiyu, or Kaiser Glider. They all float down here? Yes, they do. What's up and welcome. Stamping to strike. Like I said, he's not going to be able to keep a single star trap card today. This opponent is perfectly matched to defeat him. Goodbye, armored zombie, but you can bring it back. Your bones. Your whole deck is about bringing back zombies. Yeah. I might have chosen Mystic Tomato, to be honest, but still. To each their own. Uh, yeah, Armored Zombie has returned. Snake Hair is ready to power up with it. No, we're going to use the Hex. That was a really stupid choice. Why in the hell would you pick a monster you know is weaker than Mass Dragon? You have two Snake Hairs in your hand. And you intentionally chose a mon. Okay, it, was it didn't matter in the end. But you shouldn't have done that nonetheless. You just all I'm saying. You, you, even if you lost a Snake Hair, you got a backup Snake Hair in your hand. That's all I'm saying. You didn't have to do what you just did. All right, Dragon Zombie. There's a good monster. Dark Hole. If he draws a Poly, he could summon his boss monster. All right. Dragon Zombie is gone. Oh, it's not just gone, but the life points are too. Damn, Mokuba's deck is good. Mokuba is legit good. Oh, no. Ah, oh, weird choice. Okay, okay. You know, Luster Dragon number one probably would have been better. Just sort of saying. That's a pretty nice hand. If your name is uh, Bones and your opponent doesn't top deck Stamp and Destruction, that's a pretty nice hand. We finally have a Snake Hair on the field and it's going to need to save the day. Oh, hi there. Oh, yeah, well, that's not enough. We finally... This is the first time Mokuba has dropped below half and that's nice to see and all, but... Uh, yeah, unless you top deck something special, the duel is officially over. 
Yeah, that's a nice card, but it's not special enough. Your life points are too low to be keeping that in attack mode. That's all I gotta say, buddy. That is all I gotta say. Please stop that. Oh, you lost. <laughs> Mocha Makaiba will be moving on to top eight of our tournament. Mokuba completely countered Bones. Breaks my heart, but you know what? He did it. Sorry, buddy Bones. Your deck has gone better, but it wasn't good against an opponent that had that much spell trap destruction slash, you know, just the ability to uh, do burn and stuff. All right, so, and he also overpowered you, but most people do. You're like an average attack deck. So, Mokuba Kaiba will move forward. The next duel is Sunny Snips versus Strong... Oh, whoa, these are two heavy hitters. Sunny Snips and her Tiger deck versus Strong Jukyu and his Skill Drain deck, which we've all, all of us have already seen it. So, let's see if we can't find these characters and watch them duel. All right, here we go. OCG Academy versus Heartland Middle School. Middle school versus elementary school. I'm looking for their faces right now. I'm sorry, it might take me a second. They're in the S section, which is a little bit deeper in here. There they are. All right, that's a scary back row, I must admit. Poison Fang isn't going to work. You're, you know what? You can tie. It's funny that Skill Dream works for both of you in this case. In that, be careful. <laughs> That's all I gotta say. Be careful. Oh, hi there, medic. Oh, hi there, card that actually countered really well. Yeah, you're at 3,500 this early. This is uh, this is a really bad start for you. King Tiger's nice and all. You know, you're trying to heal yourself, and I respect that. It's an interesting play. Uh, you know what? I respect it. I like what you're doing here. You get to draw a card, you get to heal some life points. The tiger, you know what? Sunny Snips is trying to fight back. Strong Juku may be one of the four strongest students at his school, but Sunny ain't bad at her school, so she's doing real good. So what do you got? Come on, what else you got? Sun that beat 25? Call the haunted shit. Megamorph on you, yeah! Be so swap! Oh no, you still lose the buff, but I guess you do technically come out with a little more life point. Oh, it's to play in defense. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. You save some life points. And you were going to die either way, so you might as well. Okay. Okay. And I'm guessing you chose the tiger for a reason. So let's go ahead and let's see what else you can do. You're in a lot of trouble right now. You have a tiger, which is pretty good. Not good enough, but pretty good. Did some damage. Alright, alright. The burn is coming through. Your life points are in a bad spot right now, but you're trying. You're trying, Sonny. He just has better beaters than you. Thank you so much for following. I really appreciate that. Sonny's in a lot of trouble as he top-decked another beater monster. And there's only one card in her deck that can save her that isn't a spell or trap. So this duel is probably over, I'm afraid. Art of the cards try to come through. And no, it's not that card. Get her out of here in game number one of these. It looks like Strong Juku's deck is just way too fast. Although he did get Skill Drain really fast this time. So, yep. Elite Goblins. And Muscle Medic goes in. The Muscle Medic ends the duel. Good job, Strong Juku. So, we're going to be moving into game number two. And we're going to see what Sunny Snips can do. Because she didn't do so well. She didn't do bad. She just did as well as she could with what she had. Her opponent got a really good back row to start that duel. Those are the cards you needed to draw earlier. That's the cards you needed. Don't just dark hole. I know I know you're tempted, but don't just do oh son of a bitch. That's why the AI should never start with freaking dark hole. Alright, there we go. And Beast King Barbaros will do some damage. 1900 comes through, 300 health. And a horn, sure. What else you got? All right, Goblin Attack Force will overpower, but that's why we have Horn of the Phantom Beast. Horn of the Phantom Beast gives us a nice 2,700 attack stat, and now Strong is getting outmatched. And yes, Barbaros does counter Skill Drain. 
It looks like Sunny's card puts her in a good position against this opponent. King Tiger Wong Hu is definitely on the way, and they're going in. Strong is in a really bad spot. It looks like she's actually going to have more life points by the end of this duel. 8,900 life points versus 13. He needs to draw his Mega Morph combo card. Muscle Medic is here, but it ain't going to be using... Oh, God, it's healing the opponent. Why do you keep healing your opponent? Stop. You don't get it. You're going to lose. Did you really not draw anything? I mean, you don't want to skill drain. I understand that. But did you not draw anything? Air's Rock Sunrise is just going to be mean. Manticore of Darkness is just going to be mean. And Ego Boost! There is an Ego Boost. Yes, you're healing your opponent, but you're surviving the battle. Ego Boost. Oh, wait, you did that to heal? Why would you do that? Why in the hell would you do that? What the hell? Manticore does come back, but was that really just to heal? You didn't have to lose the card in your hand for that. All right, the Ego Boost is real. Manticore it will crash. It will not crash. It obviously, one more Horn of the Phantom Beast. 800 life points are yours. Horn of the Phantom Beast gets you a new card. That's a good card to top deck. Muscle Medic is in defense mode, which was a good choice because you didn't know if you were going to survive the turn. And it looks like you're not going to. And it looks like Sunny Snips has won game number two. So really, it just depends on if he will get Skill Drain with his cards fast enough or if Sunny will get her boss fast enough. Because if she gets Beast King, she can end the duel easily. But without Beast King, she's in trouble. Let's go ahead and get into game number three. These two duelists are really close. They're evenly matched. Either one has proven how they can win the duel. Oh, that's the same. That looks like the same hand to me. Okay, it's not, but that looked like the same hand. Okay, both of them started Pot of Greed. Indominal, both of them started Indominal Fire lately. <laughs> oh, oh, well, that, that could do it. Yeah, that could do it. We're just going to attack with Horn of the Phantom Beast. They're not afraid of defense mode. Draw an extra card, tribute summon, do whatever the hell you want. You're in a good spot. If he chooses to skill drain, she'll win this duel. Because she has Beast King already. Manticore is also a really safe card, so watch out. Eh, yeah, yeah, it just comes back anyway. They don't care. Savage calls CMB Dam. They do not care. Hey, there we go. That's more like it. And now, with Dark Elf in control of the duel... Oh, you just healed yourself. Oh, you just burned yourself. Good idea. Very good idea to burn yourself to make sure you keep the attack buff. And yeah, Savage says no. But he did that to keep the attack buff. I understand. Unless your opponent lets you heal or does damage to themselves, you're, you're in a good position there. They're not willing, and I understand why. Savage Coliseum doesn't work on defense mode monsters, so there you go. What is your next play? Dark Elf is there. Muscle Medic's like, here, I'll keep our life points, their life points high. Rage Battle Locks. This is looking like game, in my opinion. It looks like Strong's deck. This elementary school kid is going to beat the middle schooler. That's a nice top deck. It's not enough, but it's nice. The reason it's not enough is because even if you got back Beast King, what's the point? You still lose. The other card would heal you, making Megamorph la last even longer. Goblin Attack Force is here. Final Attack Orders is here, which is weird to put your monster in defense if you were just going to do that. Uh, Game-winning attacks are coming. There's still 4,500 damage showing. And Muscle Medic actually heals. Yeah, no, wait, dude, what are you doing? I guess you had to because of Savage Coliseum, but you could have just let your monster die instead. Might have been worth. All right, we're in a very interesting situation where you uh, you may have misplayed by still attacking when you didn't really have to. Why are we not going after the... Mm. Okay, maybe you really have no back row that will help you here. Okay, Muscle Medic is doing its job. It's going to heal the opponent. Okay, 23. And game winning. That's it. Strong will take it. Oh, final attack order says you have to attack. It's not just you have to be in attack mode. Good to know. And that is it, everybody. The winner is Strong. Strong overpowered her, uh, his opponent, even though they were both really good duelists. 
So Strong will be moving on to top eight. Sunny will be missed, but not forgotten. Although, yeah, actually, they will be forgotten because I remember when I was asking, like, they were like, who the hell is Georgie? Who the hell is freaking... Uh... I had someone ask who Light Tsukiko was, so they definitely didn't watch that one tournament. All right, let's go with Strong moving forward. The next duel is Lily Dunanana, a pro duelist. All right, our first pro duelist of the day. Let's see how she does against the Minion Serpent. Now, you know, logically speaking, Lily should win this. Logically speaking. Now, I know the AI is stupid, but she beat Chump Daddy. And that's not and that's saying a lot, because Chump Daddy did really good in the King's Throne tournament. So let's watch these two duel and let's see who truly is the best. Uh, Minion Serpent. There he is. Alright, Minion Serpent is set up. Looks like Lily is... Don't just start. Don't... This is why you hate to see it. You hate to... Don't Monster Born your opponent's monster also. Oh, it doesn't matter. Oh, dear God. You spent a whole Dark Hole to take 500 burn. Mermaid Shark's gonna at least get... To, that's actually good. That's good that you did that for yourself. Harpy's Feather, fun. You lost everything. Lily Dunanana is in danger for some reason. Why is Minion... Why is Minion Serpent doing this to a pro-level duelist? Maybe. Uh, what else do we got? We got Instant Fusion. Good play. With Instant Fusion, we could summon the all-powerful Deep Sea Shark. And then we could use that all-powerful Deep Sea Shark to summon the Cyber Shark. And with this Cyber Shark, we could start getting rid of these Mother Grizzlies. Now, unless Minion Serpent top decks his boss monster, he's going to get outmatched by that shark card. He did top deck his boss monster! The Orca Whale has devoured the shark! The Orca Whale has done it! He top decked the one monster that was strong enough! I didn't actually think he'd do it. I'm, I'm very surprised right now. What the hell? He actually got it. Big wave, small wave does not work in this situation. Monster, uh, yes, yeah, Cyber Shark is good. You need to get rid of that buffing card immediately. You need to get rid of it immediately. Good idea. Good job. The Orca is now matched with you in power. All right. A lot of my characters come from, uh, you know, Link monsters as well. Mother Grizzly destroys itself because it's just a really good play to get Spine Gilman. Yep, good play by the AI. Holy crap, Minion Serpent took down a pro in game number one. Okay. Yeah. GG is right. Minion Serpent is on top of the world and he's going into game number two. He might actually be able to knock out a pro duelist. Okay, she has a better hand this time, in my opinion. She has a safer hand. It's not just a bunch of tributes that she's stuck with. Mother Grizzly, that's fine. That is fine. Oh, you don't want to draw two of those. That's a shame. Pot of Greed and Mermaid Shark just to search for Cyber Shark, probably. Yeah, that's fine. Instant Special Summon. Oh my god, she got it super early. And there's Magic Cylinder. Shark Kraken is here. With this monster, she's in a very good position. And that was a really good combo with her dream sh or mermaid shark. That's a pro-level play right there. So what's the opponent going to do? Yeah. That's disappointing. <laughs> I would, I'd like to see better plays than that. Come on. And you're not even, it's not even worth the magic cylinder. I agree. All right. So let's see. Swords is nice, but you could just Metabo shark. Yeah, Metabo shark will do the job. Bring back your crack and try to draw that card. That card's pretty good. All right, 100 damage. Hell, Mermaid Shark's pretty good. What am I talking about? They're all good cards. So, Metabo Shark will hold the field for now. Let's see what Mr. Sea Serpent can do. He's going to surface a Sea Serpent card, the Gilman. And we're going to summon the Orca Whale. Again, an Orca Whale devours a shark. Wait a minute. All right, the Orca Whale does not devour the shark. And uh, we're in an interesting situation where if I were the player right now, I would actually go for the crash with what's in her hand. 
Cyber Shark is here, and they agree. His boss monster has been destroyed, and Lily goes in for 1,800 damage. Lily's in a really good position in this duel. She has great positioning, and he can't do much about it. All he can do is set. I feel like he got lucky in game one. That was way too lucky. Premature Burial? Premature Burial comes through. Cyber Shark has returned. We got a Mother Grizzly for fun. Mother Grizzly gets rid of the Cannonball. And there goes 18, and there goes 21. It looks like Minion Serpent is 100 life points away from losing this duel. He needs his Orca Whale, and he needs an Equip Spell or something to buff himself. Okay, a trap's not going to save you. We already saw Magic Cylinder, so there's nothing in this game that's going to save you. More Sharks, wow. All right, Matabo Sharks all day. Torpedo Fish is gone. And Lily takes game number two. We're going to game three. Lily has done it. All right, we're going to be going to game three now. Let's see if Lily will take it all or if Minion Serpent will have the biggest upset of the tournament. Literally, watching a person that beat Chum Daddy lose is not something I expected to see today. Not unless it was against another pro. But Minion Serpent, a guy we haven't seen since the Champions Carnival? Ah, that, that ain't right. Oh, she has her boss monster in her hand this time. That's really good. That boss monster is really good. Sammy beating Light. That is the biggest upset so far, but Light's not a pro or anything. She's just a, a strong element, uh, elementary school student. I don't play Roblox, nah. Nah, nah, nah. All right, let's see what we got here. Water Hazard. That was the most, uh, yeah, that was the most option or uh, obvious play. Cyber Shark is here. Cyber Shark goes in, and Poseidon Wave will hold it back and do a little burn. Eight hundred. Little Kazi burn. So what else do we got? Cyber Shark. Are we going to get to see the Megalodon? Is my question. She didn't play Swords to protect herself, so now she's in a bit of trouble. Mother Grizzly will try to keep things safe with Dream Shark. That's a good choice. That is a very good choice. That shark will keep you safe even without swords. And that call on the honey will result in a Megalodon. So, okay, you use swords anyway. I like that. So, yes, the Megalodon will be a game changer if she gets it out. This is her boss monster. For those of you that don't know what it does, it, uh, whenever it inflicts damage to your opponent, you can just pop a monster. And Tribal Guy, thank you so much the for gifting a sub. I really do appreciate that. That's super kind of you. And with your kindness, someone is now saved. So there we go. We're going to get some big damn. That sucks. You still got swords, but that really sucks to lose your monster and not have Call of the Haunted anymore. And your back row is kind of filled. Wow. Okay. Well, let's see what you got. Damn. How are you going to summon that? Oh, God. This is really bad. You got nothing. And your opponent can pierce you if they want to. You need to top deck something really good right now. No, that's for later. That's for when you're winning, not for when you're screwed. Is Lily Dunanana going to lose to a TT? Is that the reality of today? Will the duel be decided by a TT? She needs any level four monster. Yeah, that'll do. Matabo Shark will do. Do not put the big monster back in your deck. Shit. Well, I guess you did already use a lot of revival, but still. Aqua Jet is going to now have a lot of value, and it's going to go in. Goodbye, Gilman. Okay. Reborn will do it. Brings it right back. It's going to take more than a Gilman to beat Metabo Shark, though. That 3,000 is not going anywhere. Umi is going away for Umi. Love it. <laughs> I don't know why they do that. They're just so weird. All right. Umi goes away for Umi. Uh, we're going to top deck Big Jaws, which could be used to get rid of some of these problematic monsters, even if it does have to leave afterwards, which is totally worth it. Bye, Big Jaws. All right, this game three is a little intense here. Minion Serpent actually stands a chance. They just need one popping card. They lost TT, but there's still other ones in the world. That's a nice trap for, I guess for now it's fine too, but yeah, you're just helping your opponent right now. Interesting. There is an Orca play that can get them out of this, so you got to be careful. No, not going to work out yet. Lily needs more monsters. She needs to get monsters. That's good. That one's really good. Holy crap, is that one good? Okay, so that one goes in and that one goes out. There's part. Yeah, that was okay. Well, you lost one of the plays. Damn. 
Okay, we got another draw. Minion Serpent's near at the end of his rope, but he does have this to bring back his fish. He does have the Orca! And the Orca will use it! And there goes the Shark! She, he actually got it! Poseidon Wave is just gonna hold on, but it's not enough! She needs two tributes, you crazy bastard! Lily's in trouble! Metabo Shark's not strong enough! Abyssal Shark's not strong enough! Only Megalodon can beat the Orca right now! And there's no way to get to it! There just ain't no way! Minion Serpent's in control! Alright, Minion Serpent is in control. What will she do with her last plays? Mermaid can search, but it'll cost you. You're just using it to for the... Okay, you lost. Holy shit. Holy shit. I saw... Today, I saw an Orca Whale Torpedo Fish play. And it, it is literally going to decide to duel. Today is the only day we're going to see a Torpedo Fish beat a pro-level duelist. Oyster Meister's too late to the party. It's too damn late. Minion Serpent is going to top 8. He's making that money. Oh my god, you could pop back row, even if they had swords or whatever. Orca Whale has done it! Y'all laughed at him when it was his boss monster. I saw you laughing. <laughs> I saw you. And he just beat Lily with it. Alright, game 3 goes to Minion Serpent. Yep. Sorry, Lily, get out of here. You're not making a thousand easy bucks, but she only did it to stream in front of in front of her fans. Though this is going to be a big upset. This is this is where the fans start getting toxic. So Minion Serpent's there. The next duel is Rex Raptor, another pro level duelist taking on a duel academy. Well, an American Academy duelist, Saika Kohinata. Rex Raptor versus Saika Kohinata. Orcas beat sharks. Apparently so. We have proof. Ban Orca. Yes. Remember when you guys asked me to ban Block Attack? Now it's time to ban Orca. It's too good. For that one play we got to see. It's too good. Alright, I'm looking for Rex. I'm looking for uh, Saika. And then I'm going to start this duel. Rex Raptor's ready. Thank you so much, King Tyranno, for the sub. The ban Orca is a new hashtag. We're going to have to do it, aren't we? Whereas Saika and Rex Raptor are going to go at it. I love that your name's King Tyranno. Perfect timing for you to show up. It's time for you to watch Rex Raptor go ham with Black Tyranno. One of my favorite dino cards. It's just a cool card. It be honestly, it might be my new favorite dino card after that Poke Duel series. It has to be. It's just it was just so good. It was so freaking good. Alright, well, let's do it. American Academy student versus uh pro level duelist, but pro level duelist. Yeah, I saw one lose today, so why not one more? He does have his boss in his hand. Psycho does a basic play. Nothing wrong with that. Giant Rex is a really nice card. That is one of Rex Raptor's cards, and it actually does beat the opponent. So, goodbye to you. Monster Born on the opponent is kind of strange, but I'm guessing he really wants to Tribute next turn. Even though you should wait till next turn to do that play. He really wants to Tribute if he just made that play. What else do you got? Okay, he might go for it, but there's two back row, and I don't recommend it. I really don't. Hyper Hammerhead's a little safer. Let's just go with the Hyper Hammerhead. Thank you. And thank you guys so much. I appreciate the bits and everything. It's very kind of you. Okay. Lots of subs and lots of bits today. You're all very kind. Oh, man. Oh, Ace Monster time! Two-headed King Rex! But no, we're going to use it for Survival's End. And now we have Giant Rex, which was a horrible play. The AI just messed up. It didn't know what it was doing. That is what you do when your opponent has monsters, not now. Terrible play. Terrible. Premature Burial, maybe a comeback possibility. Lamia is really good. That could search out a level 8. It's the Dark Alligator combo tribute! Lamia into Dark Alligator! Rex Raptor, Survival's End is trying to save the day. Survival's End will get rid of Hyper Hammerhead in order to destroy the opponent's monster. Dark Alligator will not survive. But the token will. Dark Alligator does let you get Evil Dragon, though. Is it strong enough, though? Is it worth it? I don't think so. Uh, we're going to get rid of the Reptile Monster. Tomorrow's tournament is also on Twitch. We're trying to become a partner on Twitch. All right. 
So Evil Dragon Anata is doing great work. You can't even if you with Fisher and Dark Hole, I think one of those cards does protect it for now. Giant Rex can at least protect your life points. Yep, that's the good news. Yep. And don't forget, tomorrow's tournament is... Uh, wow, another Dark Alligator. Tomorrow's tournament is American Academy versus Dual Academy. You're going to see the rest of the Amer American Academy students. We're only seeing one today, and she's kicking ass. Holy crap. Luckily, Dark Hole is going to fix this, but Rex Raptor has no monsters he can even play. That's a nice card, though, but he has no monsters he can even play. Dark Bribe! What? Oh, shit! Oh, no, that's really bad for... Okay, well... You know what? That's... Getting a rat out of the deal is not too... Oh, no! Snake Whistle! Despair Olympus here, too. Oh, my God. She's got an answer for everything. She's got an answer for everything. Hi, Mystic Tomato. 50 damage. This is a warm-up for tomorrow. The only reason she was even able to participate is because the American Academy students came over here for that other tournament. Normally, she wouldn't be in town to be able to do this tournament. And Alligator gets you a Black Mamba. That's not bad. That's a good card. All right, Black Mamba's here. Black Mamba's effect. We're going to go ahead and throw a card away, which is the big th The big thing about it is it lets you throw a card away. That's what she wants. Uh, giant Rat. Oh, that's a horrible top deck. You don't want another one. No, you needed any other monster. Oh, that sucks so much. At least you get a Hyper Hammerhead, but still, that Hyper Hammerhead's going to get destroyed by Despero Limp. Really bad situation to be in if you're a Rex Raptor fan. She's getting that gym badge? Apparently so. He's only the first gym, right? So it's not that big a deal, but still a big bummer if you're a Rex Raptor fan. Hyper Hammerhead will do its job if they haven't normal summoned yet. They were waiting. Patience. Oh, wait. Are we going to see it? Oh! The Planetary Boss is here! Say hello to the Suppression Pluto! Pluto is here, everybody. Only Black Tyranno can match that thing in power. TT is gone. All right. That rat versus Pluto. Pluto. Just, that was so many summons. That's not even fair. That's not even fair. Giant rat comes through. Hyper Hammerhead is such a good idea. That is such a good idea. She still should have done it, but it is a good idea. MST doesn't matter. Black Tyranna doesn't work. You have to. Even though she might just resummon it, you have to. I understand, dude. I understand. All she's going to do, though, if she plays one more monster, she wins the duel. But if she doesn't have one, then she'll tribute. She's got one. She's going to pot of greed into one. And Lamia, her boss monster. No, this is the actual card she used in the manga. But whatever. Lamia is here. And say hello to the evil dragon, Anata, with 4,800 attack. That's game. Rex Raptor loses game number one to a reptile deck. Rex, the reptile survived. The dinosaurs didn't. All right. Well, let's go ahead and get into game number two. That was a good duel. That was a good duel. We got to see Pluto. We got to see um, the Dark Alligator. Rex Raptor made one misplay, and it kind of, you know, it wasn't the biggest deal, but it, it kind of sucked. Um, oh, that's what he was waiting. This duel, he got terraforming and the card he needed. Holy crap. So, obviously, it's a waste, but at least he thinned out his deck. That's something. Seal of Ori Kalkos. Rex is playing for real this duel. Last duel, he was having fun. This duel, he's playing for real. All right. Ah, shit. <laughs> that's no fun. All right. Oh, okay, Allure of Darkness. We're going to banish a card. Goodbye, Mystic Tomato. Hello, Desferal Limp. None of these cards matter anymore because Rex's dinos went from medium strength to very powerful. If you lose a duel, you lose a subscriber. Hilarious. MST comes through. MST is going to destroy damage equals reptile. Attack goes through and it works. Damage equals reptile doesn't really work here anyway. Not until next turn. That depends, Bernard. We haven't heard. But Anata's going to pop Hyper Hammerhead, and again, he has him comboed into a Black Tyranno in a minute. He's going to need something else. Sealbar Kalkos is just a brick in his hand. Fisher isn't even worth, but he's going to Fisher. Okay, AI doesn't have any chance. Well, we'll see where Rex gets next. Rex is in a bad spot. Mystic Tomato. Rex needs any level 4 monster, or below. Although I think his deck's like all level 4s, but whatever. Giant Rat, sure. Even the Rat, because Silver Calcos does not discriminate. It loves everything. 
It loves if you're an Earth type. It loves if you're a uh, uh, freaking. It doesn't matter what attribute, what type you are, uh, a giant earth type, a uh, freaking beast type. Doesn't care if you're from New York. It just, it loves you. Seal of Orcalcus will always love you. Join now. So we need to get another one of these. Fossil Dig. That could be really good. Good top deck. Yeah, Giant Rex is one of the best cards. Getting his ace monster out is going to be very difficult. Getting D to B is uh, not the easiest uh, thing to ask you. It is a two tribute monster. A really cool one. And with Silver Calcos, it could beat a blue eyes, but it's still a hard monster to get out there. Monster Born will be used. Hyper Viper Beam. Okay, well Piper Hammerhead is there to be annoying, so now Black Tyranno is a horrible choice and not worth it. Do not go for it. Fossil did just get something to get rid of Hyper Hammerhead, even just for a second. Ace monster time. There we go. The ace is on the field, and goodbye, Defender. And with that, we're going to bounce back that card. And that was a horrible choice. I guess it had to. And there goes 2100 damage. So, next turn, Rex Raptor is going to win. Yeah, that Sealboard Calcus made a huge difference. There's nothing you can do. There's literally nothing you can do. Sealboard Calcus. Hyper Hammerhead or Black Tyranno. Black Tyranno! The boss monster is here! The game winning attack ain't so game winning because Mystic Tomato has arrived! 1700 damage is going through mystic tomato remains and you bought yourself a turn with your final turn what will you do black mom is really good he's not known for his defense black Tyranno doesn't have terrible defense 1800 is something but it's still not known for it it's more of an attacker there we go that's right d to b and scarlet yeah, Scarlet only for extreme speed. The rest of its stats were terrible. And Black Tyranno goes in, and that is game. Rex Raptor takes game number two. Black Tyranno has done it. So, we're going to go into game three. Will this pro win it all, or will it be the American Academy student? In my opinion, the American Academy student seems faster. So, I think Rex got lucky with that seal board Calcos. He has the attack advantage with it. Okay, he did draw. Well, hold up, but he did draw it, though. It can go either way. I'm going to say it can go either way. As long as he has seal, it can go either way. Gillisaurus is such a good choice. I love that the AI knew to do that. You should still play seal. Good. Good. Really good play. I was going to say later, but you know what? Never mind. Ignore everything I said. I just saw that. I saw that just like the rest. Oh. God damn. Start pulling the first freaking turn. No resource management. Not a single hint of it. Widespread ruin. Sure, why not? Mr. Tomato is annoying, so I don't mind you popping that. So what do we got? Heart of the cards. Gillosaurus again. It would bring back the opponent's monster. But you do overpower it, but it is a floater, so it's not really worth it. It's not really worth it, just because you're helping them get their reptile stuff out. The Mr. Tomato might end on a reptile. No, it didn't. Interesting. I would have picked Black Mamba, but you do you. Maybe you have a better card in your, Maybe you're just going to play something in your hand. I'd agree. That's really good. Snake Rain. That's really good. Holy crap. You really don't like Despero Limp, do you? I just saw you throw away three Despero Limps. The AI does not like it. Not one bit. Don't Gil Source, son of a bitch. Okay, you love Gil Source. Oh, wait. It's fine because they picked freaking Despero Limp. I thought they... They didn't even throw away one alligator. Crazy. All right, Mystic Tomato is here. And there's the Black Mamba that I told them to use earlier. Which, why, why'd you choose that one? Okay, whatever. I, I need to stop caring. It looks like Rex Raptor is just going to run over his opponent. This opponent is getting run over right now. That trap card hasn't worked yet. I don't know what it is. Oh, no! I haven't seen her brick yet. Is that actually a brick? Fossil dig for fun at this point. Giant Rex is just for fun. He doesn't even have the ability to attack directly. And Rex Raptor overruns his opponent. Anytime he got Sealboard Calcos, he won the duel. So Sealboard Calcos gives Rex the victory. He's going to top eight of this tournament. Good job, Rex. Psycho was a good duelist. She just got overpowered in these duels, the last two duels. And that brick was really heartbreaking. Her deck has so much search, so I'm surprised it happened. All right. 
The next duel is Weevil Underwood, the king of games. This is one of the few times we're going to see a king of games duel while they're a king and not just at a big king of games tournament. The only other person that did this was, pro well, actually, the only person that didn't do this was the D. The D never did this, but Weevil has because he thinks of this as a free thousand dollars as if he needs money. Like I said, fuck them kids. That's that's his entire philosophy. So let's go ahead and watch him duel. Now, granted, he's dueling against a future duelist, so we don't know. Maybe the king will fall behind a future duelist. Now, let's go ahead and watch them go at it. Weevil Underwood versus Bella. Bella of the Arcadia Movement is on the player two side. Let's get her ready. Weevil Underwood is on the player one side. And let's have some fun. He has his super rare Goki Bore, and Rageki Break will get rid of that. You just threw away premature burial. Holy shit. That's insane. All right, well, Swords of Revealing Light shows that there's a pinch hopper on the field. You need to draw Harpy's Feather Duster if you are me. You are not me. Play a Howling Insect instead. Yeah, the AI actually did it. Thank God. Thank God the way I, the AI did that. So, Bella's going to play her Krebons. Krebons is not strong enough to beat the Howling Insects, so that's all well and good. Weevil just needs to top deck a boss monster now, and he'll be in a good spot. That's okay, but you shouldn't use it. I know you have no resource management, but please don't use it. Thank God his AI didn't use it. Thank God. All right, Bella's in a really good position because Swords has bought her a lot of time. I don't know what that card is. It revived Krebons, apparently. It took 600 burn to do it. That's a sword of psychic powers. And Psychic Power Sword destroys Howling Insect, just helping him thin out his deck, I guess. Howling Insect continues to thin it out, and we have ourselves a set. Heart of the Cards gets you... That's a good card, but it's not strong enough anymore. So you might as well set it. Swords is gone, though, so next turn. Next turn, you could start going in. That's a really good card. All right. My, that's a better card you need to get rid of. Dude, you need to get rid of that. No, the big insect didn't stand a chance. The mind jumper. There's nothing worth jumping here. I promise you that. But because you did so much damage to yourself, you actually made Krebons unkillable in terms of power. So Cross Sword Beetle's a nice card. Please get rid of that freaking mind jumper card. Thank God you were smart enough to do that. You are going to die, but you were going to die either way. So you might as well get rid of it. Weevil Underwood is in a bad spot right now, though. Attacks are going to start coming through. Goodbye, Cross Sword Beetle. Great card. Goodbye, Goke Boy. Super rare card. <laughs> and Weevil, draw Insect Queen or Bust for your pinch hopper. Hot Agreed. That's pretty good. That's a pretty good top deck. And, oh. Call, you're doing this for safety reasons, I assume. I guess you could cost them some life points, but, you know. Okay, no, you're just going to do that. Interesting. He's in a bad spot, and he used his Monster Reborn poorly because AI will be AI. Um, let's see what they can do. Pinch Hopper didn't stand a chance. There is no target. Call the Haunted is unnecessary. Should be saved, honestly. It should have been saved, but AI doesn't know how. You can go after that silent si- Oh, it was one turn too late. It was one draw too late. That's a shame. All right, Silent Psychic Wizard goes in, and there we go. Genetic Woman has returned. It looks like the Psychic deck has full control of the duel. They may have a life point disadvantage, but it will not be for long. Here comes the game-winning attacks. All right. His only hope is to draw... Oh, there is no hope. <laughs> I take it back. There is zero hope. That one equip spell was enough to put the king down. All right. All hope is gone. Oh, look what he got! <laughs> Get him out! Well, it's only game one, but whatever. Get him out of here. The king of games is losing to one of our future duelists. Game one goes to Bella. All right, we're going to be moving into game number two. Let's see if Weevil now knows what to do. He thought, oh my god, these are just some kids. It's not going to be bad. It's kind of like uh, that really messed up episode of South Park where Car Cartman joined the Special Olympics and then just got wrecked in every category. Weevil's like, oh, I'm going to join the Youth Cup. I'm the king of games. No one can stop me. And then he's just going to get wrecked. Oh, man. 
All right, Howling uh, Insect goes in. Howling Insect gets Howling Insect. Perfect Gods of Great Moth is not a card he ever wants to draw, but it does work well with his deck when he gets the combos off. Okay, Equip Spell comes through for Howling Insect, which is part of a combo. And it will be used. Okay, here we go. His combo is performed for his second strongest card and his boss monster. He got his Metamorphosis Queen, or whatever it's called. Metamorphose. Metam ah, who cares? With a Metam... Uh, the Morpho. We're going to call it the Morpho. The Morpho Queen is here. So Weevil is definitely not pulling his punches anymore. And she even gets a token, which he can put in defense mode. Automatically making her better than Insect Queen. Not just by stats. All right, Premature Burial gets back Telekinetic Shocker and Panda Borg. And the sword! Not the sword! That sword's too good! The game-changing sword from last duel, it's gone. Bummer. All right, so the Queen will get another token for Tribute in case they draw another Insect Queen. Perfectly Ultimate Great Moth cannot be summoned that way, sadly. It was supposed to be summoned by the other spell, but they happen to draw their only Ultimate Great Moth, so... Unlucky. Unlucky Weevil. The opponent has only 1,800 life points left. They're in critical condition. And there's infinite tokens for them to try and attack. Oh! Oh, what the hell? You, you lose. The game's over. Yeah. Yeah, the game's over. Uh, it couldn't target the queen, good to know. But even with that, um, you did a thousand burn to yourself. Even if they can't pop queen, you did a thousand burn to yourself. You would have had life points left if you didn't, because they had no tribute. All right, well, whatever. Game number two easily went to Weevil. That is what that is what Weevil is talking about. So let's go into game number three. All right, there we go. So, game number three, Bella, you need to get a little luckier. Your Psychic Sword didn't work out that time. Oh, he's got an interesting hand. It's not exactly a good hand, but it's interesting. Howling Insect is a fun start. And what are you going to do with it? Psychic Snail, that's a good card. And Pinch Hopper is here. Pinch Hopper is a good card. The King of Games is here to actually play this time, even though his cards can't beat the opponent. That card can, funny enough. Weevil is one and one with this opponent. Goki Pole is about to show off its uh, best effect by summoning... Oh, Armored B, what the hell? You have Goki... We saw it last duel! You have Goki Bori in your deck! Which, uh... I know Armored B is good, don't get me wrong. I know it's good. But Goki Bori has a combo. And the combo helps you win the duel. I'm trying to help you here, man. Put Pinch Hopper in attack mode. You're going to lose. Good job. All right. Good job. Perfect use of Pinch Hopper right there. Get your cross sword beetle early. That was stupid. What the? F You're the king? You're the king and you just made that play? Oh, it didn't matter, but still. The f*** was that? What is wrong with you? All right, well, Psychic Snail is back. Your opponent is stacked against you, and Weevil Underwood may not win a single duel in today's tournament. Weevil, the king of games, is about to be known as a fraud. Attack goes through, but the Psychic One wanted to die. Yep, that one gets you. Yep. Um, Weevil, what are you doing, bro? You're in so much trouble. Bella's going to knock you out of this tournament. Hello, Genetic Woman. Attack goes through. Parasite, Parasite. All right. If he draws his spell card, he could do this. He needs it. He really needs it. No, that's a good card, actually, but it's not enough. Cross Sword Beetle does it. Set Big Insect because you're a coward. Do it. Good. Good. No, don't use it yet. You don't know what she has. You got to wait. Patience, my friend. Patience. Oh, son of a bitch. Oh, boy. Oh, God. That is... That is great. All right. Well, you can buff your monster. You're not even going to buff your monster. You do know she runs 1,900 attack point monsters. You need to run that... You need to play that equip spell. Krebon's... Okay, she might get her synchro out. She might get it. 
Oh, there's the Goki Bor. I was talking about him. Should have picked that one, but whatever. This is your king of games. I know Yugi made some horrible plays as well, and we know Kaiba was the biggest fraud. He's either, Kaiba was a bigger fraud than this guy, but holy crap. Prana was never a fraud, though. She always fought hard. I don't think she ever played horribly. Seal of Orichalcos. Beautiful cover. Beautiful. If she draws her his Synchro Monster, we're in trouble here. Nope, just Krabons. Nope, no. Oh, that doesn't work. The Seal can take it. You need to do that one more time. All right. Either those traps are really good, or we're about to see some bull crap. Cross sword. Time for piercing. Yep. 800, 800. Krebon's effect will be activated. Very nice. Krebon saves them from losing to piercing damage, which is how he became king of game, funny enough. Weevil Underwood, you lucky bastard. You might still be in. Oh, look what he got. He doesn't have to, but he has it. Yeah, there's no point. Because, oh, well. Oh, you just want one extra attack, really? And the perform! Oh, man, that's bad. Oh. Oh, she has... Oh, no! The double Krebons! She has no life points. She, what is she doing? She has no life points and she put that card in attack mode? If he top decks any insect monster, he's going to win this duel. That isn't a tribute. Here we go. Will he win? He got pot of greed. No. Okay. Well, actually, swords will buy him time. Funny enough, but she'll go in defense mode. Okay. Weird duel. Weird game three. Weevil Underwood is not leaving just yet. Pandaborg is home. It's time for Call of the Haunted. You know it is. It's time for Call of the Haunted. You gotta try. Cross Sword Beetle is here. It does not do piercing because you need two insects to do it. Oh, he's near death. Holy crap, this duel. Either character can win. Either whatever. I don't care. Either character can win. Swords is the only thing keeping him alive. Mine? Yep, we already knew this was gonna happen. He was gonna go... She's got 50 life points left. She has 50 life points left. You didn't hard me, so it's because you can't win anymore. What the hell does that do? It healed her! Oh my god! Is he gonna lose? Is this it? Whatever that trap was, it healed her. He's out of swords! Is there anything in the grave that's good enough? No, well... He has just enough life points for that to work. He cannot attack with it yet, but he did save himself. He is still in the duel because the best he could have chosen was a cross sword beetle, which I would have done, but he's an idiot. No! He, no! The heal mattered! You should have harpies! You lost to your own insect queen! You should have harpies! Bella knocks out the king of games! Weevil has lost! He didn't win a single duel today! Not once did he win. Weevil Underwood is a fraud. How did he win the... Like, literally, how did he win the freaking uh, Illusion Park tournament? I do not know. It was a good... No, it was great duels, but how did he win? Even with some stupid plays. Let's go ahead and see who's up next. Sarah Taker, another pro duelist. We'll be going up against Sammy Trunks, one of the biggest upsets of the day. One of. So, Sammy Trunks, everybody, versus Sarah Taker. Let me go find Sarah real quick, and then we'll get this duel started. All right. He better hope she wins the tournament, because if he loses to someone that didn't even win the tournament, then he's actually the worst. No, there, this tournament is just a youth cup. It was just hosted by an anonymous source that gives out $1,000 to a child. Has nothing to do with... Uh, yeah, it has nothing to do with pro rankings or anything. It just anyone under the age of 18 is here. 
And that could get here. Also, that's a really good first turn. That is a really good first turn. All right, Sarah Taker, nice job with your first turn. Way better than your freaking uh, tournament uh, showing. For those of you that have forgotten, when she was at Illusion Park, she was ranked four. The only people she wasn't higher ranked than were Daigo, Taya, and uh, the D. Dark Hole is obvious. Yeah, that's going to happen. All right. And you're kind of bricked. That's super bad. You need a flying elephant, and you need it now. Rageki Break is interesting. Oh, you threw away a magic cylinder to pop that. Ah, that's... Okay. Sure. Back to your hand, I guess. And it's back to the field, I guess. And it has more attack. Yes, it should. Good luck. You're fighting a pro. <laughs> she does not need Cylinder. She absolutely does not need it. All right. Oh, this is horrifying to watch. Hi there. 25 is almost enough to end the duel. His reputation doesn't matter anymore. It's Yeah, he's, he's done. All right, Shifting Sands gets rid of the monster, but unless you top deck your Flying Elephant, the duel is over. Oh, no Flying Elephant. All right, without a Flying Elephant, the duel is over. That is horrifying. He literally bricked himself to death. Monster Aborn literally will... Okay, she the second she got it, she got it. It's never leaving. The Golden Lord is here. Attack goes through, and the duel has ended. Don't worry about it. You'll see it next time. All right, going to game number two. She destroyed Sammy. Sammy didn't stand a chance. She obliterated Sammy in that duel. Let's see. Yeah, this is a much... Well, no, not a much better hand. He has two tributes in that hand. That is not so good. He does have Flying Elephant. Um, and as long as she doesn't have Eldritch, it'll be fine. Ugh, she has one monster that beats it by 50. Damn. Damn, that is a shame. These elephant cards aren't very good. You need to, you need spells and traps with elephants, not draw all your monsters at once. You're in trouble. You are in so much trouble. I don't like your odds. That's a really good top deck. You need some good combo out of this. Okay. Okay. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. She got it into the grave. That's where she wanted it. Oh god. Zombie Master doesn't work with it. Rush recklessly saves him for one turn. He has one turn on this earth. <laughs> Make it count. Make your one turn count. Hi there. Bye there. All right, and put it on the field. You know you want to. Yeah, yeah, you did. All right. Defense mode, attack mode didn't matter. It's going to attack next turn. So what is your plan, Sammy? That's actually not bad to get that card if you could have used it a long time ago. Come and get it. Come on. We want to see it. Gurney is here to help out. Nimble Momonga will try to hold on, though it will not. It will not. There's too many powers here. He needs a pot of greed into a dark hole. A pot of greed into a dark hole. That is like, that's it. And she has a trap. Dear God. Yeah, this is the same. That's the same top deck he got last time he lost. Oh, perfect. All right, go ahead and kick his butt. Go ahead. Oh, yay. This is fun. That's about right. Get him out of here! 5,000 damage! Easy! 1,900 more, yes, 5,000 more, come on! Reminder that Sarah lost in round one of the Illusion Park Tournament. Now she's going in, now she can, she finally found people her level. <laughs> Sammy Trunks, just go home, man. Go home. You won one duel today, be happy with that. You should be happy you, ever, you even won a match today. That might have been the first time you've ever done that. All right, Sarah Taker shall move forward. The next duel is Rebecca Hawkins after losing everything versus Alda V Stormer, one of our streamer duelists. 
All right, let's see who wins between these two characters. My money is on Rebecca. Don't forget, she used to be a pro, and she actually won one of our tournaments. But, uh, yeah. Who did Sarah lose to? I do not remember. No memory of that. Alda is ready to duel. And, uh... I forgot who the other person was already. My bad. Let me fix that forgetfulness of mine. Rebecca, of course. Of course. Where's Rebecca? There she is. All right, Rebecca's ready to duel. Alda has a great hand. Alda has a legitimately great hand. Yeah, gotta love that hand. Speaking of hand... All right, Harpy's brother is going to go in, but that does give Rebecca a chance to tribute as she has two monsters to tribute now. No, I was incorrect. She started the duel with two Nimble Momongas in her hand. Super unlucky. Tribute to the Doom, a classic. Throwing away Mary, a class. God says no! You will not destroy my Harpy's brother! You will never destroy Harpy's brother. It's not allowed. All right. Oh, shit. That's Injection Fairy Lily. Okay, well, that card's pretty good. That card is pretty good, even though the AI uses it poorly. Luckily for Alda, she does have her source. This former pro is putting her through the ropes, but she can do it. She can do it. Hunter Owl is going to start by getting, well, healing the opponent. That's fine. And uh, Swords will make it so that the AI is dumb enough to put that into defense mode. Because the AI doesn't know how to use Lily. She's going to start her healing, which is what she's known for. Oh, look at that. The AI doesn't know how to use the Lily. Good. Good. It can use it aggressively. It cannot use it when Swords is up. It doesn't know to just keep it in attack mode. Oh, you put your life points extremely low. Holy crap. Alda has put herself in critical condition. You lost! You lost by putting yourself in critical condition. Even if you don't attack that bunny, all she has to do is flip it. All she has to do is flip it. The bunny is lethal. And that's it. Rebecca Hawkins wins game one. Alda V-Stormer is done for. Alda V-Stormer loses game number one. So we're going to go into game number two now. Maybe the streamer could do a little better against this former pro. Everyone thinks Rebecca's bad, but honestly, the moon duelists were future duelists compared to her. You got you to gotta understand that Rebecca is good. She was just matched up against people from the future. We just saw Weevil lose to a future duelist. So come on. Give him a break. Rebecca is good. She's just not so good on the moon. You're too good up there. Too fast. All right. Pato Greed. With Pato Greed, we're going to get Garuda. Garuda's really good. Not with that particular monster you summoned, but yeah. All right. Now we're going to get a... Oh, Tribute to the Doom. Classic card. Nothing wrong with that. And what monster are we summoning? The monster we threw away? No, we're stealing. We don't like... We want their monster. Okay. Nimble Bamanga. Of course. You want to start with that every time. Love it. All right. Nimble Bamanga is here. Obviously, a dark hole is probably coming as the AI can't help themselves. Foolish Burial is really good. There is a combo. All right. Foolish Burial time. She did start double manga again. And there we go! She got her boss! Alda V Stormer summons the Dark Storm Dragon! This is her ultimate monster! It is a Gemini, so it does work with Birthright, as it is a uh, normal monster in the grave. Dark Storm Dragon is here with a massive 20. Oh, there's swords. Unlucky. With a massive 2700 attack stat. It summons itself. All right, it is now an effect monster. They don't pop swords. They wouldn't do it. They wouldn't do it. It's attached to it. It won't do it. Ring of Destruction, too late now. And 2,700 burn both ways is super risky by Rebecca Hawkins, but I'm sure she has a plan. All right, Rebecca, uh, what's your plan? That better not be Nimble Manga, because you already lost, if it is. 
birthright again. Yep, why, might as well. Her plan is game three. That is <laughs> that is a lot of people's. Oh, she did get her jar. Cyber jar. Well, hold up. Oh, no, wait. The AI always plays in defense mode because they're programmed to. Except if you're on the other side. I don't know why. Even if it's a bad idea, they always do. Terrible game. Terrible programming. Premature can bring back the Dark Storm Dragon again. The last Nimble Momonga. Fire Princess. Foolish Burial. Solemn Wishes. Cyber Jar! No way. No fucking way. Holy crap. The Rebecca pulling out her classic moves. You're right. You're right. Garudas are here, but you just saw the Cyber Jar! Why would you play Garudas when you just saw it? Oh my god. Oh man. Oh man, you're making me upset. Mm. My brain do not like. Oh, Morphing Jar. Lots of healing. You need that healing, I'll admit. Okay, we know that they can get Dark Storm Dragon whenever they want. They have Premature. Harpies will stop the healing. Harpies Feather Duster is important. Foolish Burial throws away. Oh, that's for healing as well. So they have an idea. Jesus Christ, you just. What the fuck did you just do? You left yourself with 100 life points for what reason? I'm sorry, why? I'm sorry, no? Oh, Last Will might save her. Last will, They were Last Wills. They might save her. Last Will sub. No, not in attack mode! You have 100 life points! You have 100 life points! Why are they in attack mode? We know they're both Solemn Wishes. Last Will says you can put them in defense mode. You don't even need Dark Storm Dragon, but you could do it for fun because it's cool monster. And the duel, and it's oh, oh my god, oh my god! All you had to do is put in defense mode. It wasn't a hard thing to do. Alda V Stormer takes it. All right, we're going to game three. Will the former pro win it all, or will it be the streamer, Miss V Stormer? <sighs> one day, guys. One day, I'll get to stream a tournament of actual good duelists. And no, I wouldn't do it with humans, because humans, they, they only play too advanced stuff, and they take too long. AI goes super fast. All right, let's try this again. Let's see what happens. All right, Harvest Star Duster is a great start. A great start. Because that gets rid of all of her healing. If uh, Rebecca tries to go the healing route. Okay, that's every time you've gone tribute to the doom. Every time you've thrown away like a nimble mamanga and you got tribute to the doom. What the hell is going on with these opening hands? There's, there's, there's something fishy going on, and no back row is also fishy. Harpy's brother will do its job. Goodbye, UFO turtle. You served us well. Uh, UFO turtle will continue to try and stall. Understandable. Maybe give her a chance for tribute. Pot of Greed? Yeah, you already used your Tribute to the Doom, so... Still no back row. Interesting. Some really good cards in your hand there. Hunter Owl will easily destroy anything UFO Turtle summons. Fire Princess didn't stand a chance. Oh, poor Rebecca. Poor Rebecca. You've run into a streamer that actually knows what she's doing. Granted, the chat is telling her what to do, but whatever. Alright. Youth Cups allow coaching. Harpy's Feather Duster comes through. Trap card is... Magic Cylinder. Big loss. That is a big... Oh, you're just going for it. You're done. You're done with this opponent. I understand. Nimble Manga didn't stand a chance. We already saw you throw one away, so at best you have one more. That is your last one. At least you're healing. You definitely need it. And uh, UFO Turtle. Yep, we knew that, that that was the reason you couldn't do your other thing. And Fire Princess is gone. Rebecca still has over 8,000, or no, has 7,200 life points, but she's uh, she's got a full field of uh, powerful monsters against her. She has a trap this time, that's the good news. But what is she going to do with it? She's going to try and heal. There are five monsters on the field. One of them pops. Yeah. And that was all you had. She got it again every single time. Every single time she needs it, she gets it. Every single time. And there we go. They always set, remember, they always set the AI's program that way. I hate it too. I don't know why they do that. Oh, she drew all her tributes. Shit. Oh, Premature might help. 
She didn't draw anything. If you were just aggressive, you would have been fine. Oh my god, if you had just played them all in attack mode. The natural destiny draws? That's right. I like that. Monster Born comes through. Battlestorm is back to destroy any back row you try to use. Really good card. Oh, well, unless you have a Dark Hole and a Harpies, which we did not see you draw any of that, you're in trouble. Premature we saw, but... Okay. The aggressive cyber char play. Only a pro would think of that. Harpy's brother returns, which means we can now start popping back row, I believe. The double battle storm is just double pops. Goodbye, last will. Goodbye, cyber jar. Flying Kamakiri for game. That is the end of the duel. Rebecca Hawkins has lost. No thousand dollars. Her story will not continue for a while. But Alda V Stormer's story is in the works because she's in the top eight now. She has made it farther than Lily Dunanana. So let's go ahead and let's see uh, who's up next. Rebecca is disappointed. So, the next characters that are up is the final characters of round two, top 16. And they are Yami Kuroda versus Mickey Hops. Okay, Yami Kuroda did incredibly well in the minor league tournament. Mickey Hops is a purely new character that we have no real info on as he's only dueled once. So, place your bets. Yami Kuroda or Mickey Hops? I'm looking for them right now and struggling to find them. Found Yami. And Rex won. And found Mickey. Mickey. Why is he hiding from me? I actually do not see him on here. What the hell? Am I blind? I might be blind. I can't see him. All right. Mickey is here somewhere. Mickey. We literally used him earlier, so he's here somewhere. I'm blind. I do not see him. I absolutely, positively do not see him. Somehow I've lost a deck. Oh, no, there he is. Ha! <laughs> found him okay took forever sorry about that did not mean to make that take forever i'd never want that to take forever he just somehow got lost to me so mickey hops versus yami Kuroda. let's go ahead and set this up do 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 do, do, do. there we go oh thank you for uh, the kind words i appreciate that sorry i missed that for so long i was focused on trying to find somebody fight it wasn't even in the corner. It was just mixed in with the freaking uh, Tomorrow's Tournament characters. <laughs> it was mixed in with all the American Academy students. So, oh, already Achaeus. He could totally do it. Nope, Mad Arch me for piercing. Okay. Rescue Rabbit in defense mode. How could you? Oh, no. The duel's over. Um, it's actually over. I don't care. It's over. None of this matters. Unless you have Rabbit Dragon in your hand right now. It's over. All right. Rescue Rabbit does its job. We got Pale Beast and Pale Beast. We do have it. The boss monster, Rabbit Dragon. And Rabbit Dragon's going to be comboing with the Pale Beast because Pale Beast can defeat the Mad Archfiend. But they don't know what's coming for them. Mickey fought back. Good job, Mickey. You fought back. You summoned your boss monster, your family's boss monster, and it doesn't matter because look what's in their hand. I mean, that's just for fun at this point. Look what's in their hand. The boss monster. Boss versus boss, and in this case, Caius wins. Banishment has been performed. The game-winning attack is here. The final attack goes nowhere. It's not enough to win the duel, but it's close. All right. Because it was banished, Mickey has no way of getting his boss monster back. I can't see him winning unless he gets Darkhold. 
That is his only hope. Uh -uh. Nikki fans, go home. You guys forgot about Yami Kuroda. You guys forgot. Oh, he got Dark Hole. You guys forgot who Yami Kuroda was. All right. Crazy Beast goes in, and the game-winning attack is good. Yami Kuroda is one duel away from top eight. Heck yeah. So we're going to be going into game number two. And let's see if Mickey can make a comeback. He did fight hard in that first duel. He did everything his deck could. He just, you know, his opponent got Caius. What are you going to do? Caius is really good. Speaking of which, Caius in the opening hand again. All right. Dark Zebra is here, but, uh, you know, Giant Germ is really scary. Harpy's Feather can deal with any back row problems. Let's see what it is. What did Mickey lose? Mickey loses. Oh, that's a good card. Yeah, Mickey's card would have won him this hit this fight. But giving the equip spell to a card like that is not a great idea. That equip spell is more for other situations. Great Angus is here to destroy the monster. Mad Archme didn't stand a chance. And we're probably gonna see Giant Germ. Giant Germ is probably what we're gonna have. Not Infinity Dark. Oh, no, we're going to go Mad Art. The AI isn't programmed to understand effects. I know this. I know this very well. That card is banished now. You don't even get that card back. It's gone. You already have one in the grave, so I'm sure you don't care. But it's gone. And now you've given your opponent time to get more monsters, so now the Giant Germ lost value. Oh, you lost. He is so good. Yami Kuroda is so good. He's got some sort of power in him because he's always getting what he needs. 1,500 from Infinity Dark comes through. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. And Pale Beast is not strong. It is strong enough, and Mickey is going to draw a card. Mickey is drawing a card, everybody. He's got this. No spells and trap. I was hoping he'd get a trap card, but this is still really good. All right, Giant Germ is a horrible top deck when you already have a germ in your hand. It actually screwed him. That top deck screwed him. Wait, Kuroda is in trouble. Kuroda is in so much trouble. That Giant Germ top deck has cost him his tribute monster. He needs a revival card or a special summon. This is insane. Mickey is in a perfect spot to win this. And he drew an extra card, but it's not a spell or trap. So Yami Kuroda still has a chance. He just needs revival. That can do it. That can help you. It won't give you game, but it can help you. It'll buy you time. It will buy you time. Here we go. The Vampire Koala is gone. The field is wide open. The Ayers Rock Sunrise is nice. Dark Reaper is a terrible target. It should have picked anything else. But 1800 goes in. It's like the AIs don't read their own effects. Maybe they are like humans. Infinity Dark is in a safe spot because the Zebra will be in defense mode, but we don't know what's coming next. Dark Zebra in defense mode. Premature Burial brings back a crazy beast to make sure there's no... Th That's interesting. By choosing that monster, he makes sure that there's no Mystic Tomato floating. There's no floating at all. And Rabbit Dragon has joined the party. The boss monster is here. I was just talking about how it stopped Mystic Tomato and he, got, he tributed it. Big mistake on that one. All right, heart of the cards. Pale Beast ain't going to do it, but the life points are going to be close. It looks like I see a comeback. I see a comeback. This is real. Come on, Yami Kuroda. Infinity Dark is unnecessary because your boss beat their boss, at least in this interaction, just like last time. Pot of Greed is unnecessary. You already have everything you need. What do you get, though? Just good cards in general. Caius is here, banishes the boss, so that means you're left with nothing. Mickey just really wanted to summon his his family's boss monster, and it has screwed him over. Without that, he's in so much trouble. Mickey needs to top deck Magic Cylinder or bust. Oh, he had Dark Hole! I didn't know he had it! Wait a minute, does he have a monster? No, he's bricked! Mickey used so many monsters to get to this point that he has nothing left. Mickey's got nothing left in the tank. He needs something. Use your bunny powers, you son of a bitch. Giant rat. Unleash power. He needs it. It's the game winning attack. He unleashes with exact damage. That is it. 
Mickey Hops with exact damage wins the duel in a huge upset. Mickey Hops takes down Yami Kuroda. We're going to game three. Will Yami Kuroda drop immediately to just some freaking bunny kid? Is that possible? Or are we going to see what we all expect? No Caius this time. Rescue Rabbit is a horrible play. Unless you're just trying to get cards into your grave. That's more of an aggression play, not a defensive uh, not a defensive play. And I've seen you use it right. You've even reborn it into uh, Rabbit Dragonfly, which was really good in your first duel. All right, 1800. Mad Archfiend is not the safest card, though, but it was probably the best thing to summon in your hand. Just to, Not really, but yeah. Oh, yep. Putting cards in the grave was part of the plan. It was officially part of the plan, because look at this. He's got Great Angus. And with Great Angus, Mad Archfiend's in defense mode. Howl of the Wild will make sure they get to do some burn damage. That's 600 burn. And uh, what else do we got? Just 1800? Just 1800. Nothing wrong with that. And Dark Saber does not have to go into defense mode because he has a friend. When they have friends, they're not a friend. Oh, triple infinity dark. Oh, boy. Dark hole. Goodbye. You and your friend can die together. And Infinity Dark has uh, arrived. So we're going to do 1,500. Put it on the list. Yep. Triple Infinity Dark is here to do its job. Double Rescue Rabbit again. But what can you pick this time? You already used Great Angus. Has to be Pale Beast. It's worth crashing because you're going to lose the monster anyway. Not really worth, but I understand you're doing that for the draw power. And Hollow the Wild works well with this, so why not? I understand. I understand why you did it. It's, it's just, you know, you got to watch yourself, kid. All right, life points are getting pretty critical. One person's at 27, and Mickey's wide open, so another one of those powerful cards could go in. I would not use Giant Orc. Yami Kuroda disagreed with me. Mickey, get in there. Get in there, Mickey. Go kick his ass for disagreeing with... Oh, no! Mickey Hops is bricked! He might have all the rabbit dragons. Legin, a le classic, but he can Dark Hunter is better in this case because there's the exact monsters you need. Uh, Mickey Hops is probably done for, folks. I'm afraid that he drew only equips or only stuff that he doesn't need. Rescue Rabbit has no effect. It's hilarious, but it already used all the normal monsters up. It did 300 damage before Do the fuck. All right, he's it, it, it was all he had, guys. It was all he had. He should have just Dark Hold and then set, but he gave up. Mickey Hops loses game number three. He did really good in this tournament. Honestly, I'm very impressed with him. Not as good as his mom, but he was up against harder opponents. So, good job, Mickey. Get out of here. Yami Kuroda, great, uh, great job. You get to move forward. Yami Kuroda is our winner, everybody. So, let's get uh, Mickey Boy out of here, and let's go to top eight of our tournament, everybody. The eight strongest characters are going to start popping off. They are Yami Kuroda, Alda Vista. Oh, God, it's back. Oh, my God. The freaking chat is going to be so pissed. Oh, her chat. Uh, Sarah Taker versus Bella. Rex Raptor versus Minion Serpent. And Mokuba Kaiba versus Strong Jukyu. Here we go, everyone. The first duel of top eight is Mokuba, one of the unstoppable duelists today, taking on Strong Jukyu. Remember, Mokuba is not here for the money today. He is literally here just to do good. Yeah, he just wants to practice, get stronger for his brother's sake. And he could be like, hey, brother, look, I won a tournament. Finally. All right. So, Strong Jukyu, a good duelist. Mokuba, a very good duelist. Let's watch them go at it. Don't worry. I'm going to get rid of that right now. All right. And looking for strong as we speak. I see him. All right, we're good to go. Okay, we got ourselves a set. That's always fun. Gives him time, buys him what he needs. Goblin attack force unwilling to attack, which means we should expect no skill drain or maybe anything like that. I would still go in because I'm not a coward, but, you know, strong juke you is. Giant orc is here, and they're all gone. That's a lot of back row that will never be. Premature Burial, so you can finally do some damage. I recommend it. Yeah, you might as well. All right, 2300. You better hope your back row protects you because uh, your opponent's probably about to run in and stamp on you. Time to get that stamp in destruction going. Luster Dragon, you know you want to. 
And Stamp of Destruction is here. 500 burn. 1900 goes the wrong way, and it looks like old Mokuba Kaiba is below half life points. That's pretty scary. Hey, thank you so much for following Yu Gi Oh! fan. Get ready for some Yu Gi Oh! this Saturday and Sunday, every Saturday and Sunday on our Twitch channel. So, with this, it uh, looks like uh, Strong Jukyu is in a weird spot because he has no monsters, and it looks like Mokuba could just go in. Who cares about the back row? Ah, shit. You know what? I'm the one that hyped him up. I hyped him up. Um, what else do you got? You got Eugene Ward Warwolf. That's a great card. Okay. Looks like uh, Mokuba is one turn away from death. He needs to top deck something. Can't use it. Call the Haunted. Whatever you pick, it's not strong enough. Okay. He chose to just get rid of his own life points. Goblins. Oh, wow. Going for that? Now if he uses Flying Kamikiri and the AI is too stupid not to, it's over. Oh my god. Strong Jukyu beats Mokuba Kaiba in game number one. Mokuba didn't draw any of his starry crap. All right, let's go ahead. Let's get into game number two. Strong played his AI. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. All right, let's get in there. And it looks like still no starry crap, but he'll get there. He got all of his safe cards. Mass Dragon is on the field. Mass Dragon is going to be going up against uh, Muscle <laughs> Muscle Medic. Muscle Medic is going to get rid of that card, healing the opponent, making it really easy to Mega Morph. Mass Dragon keeps the field safe, and I'm guessing a Stamping Destro or a Smashing Ground is coming. Smashing Ground will do its job. Luster Dragon's on the field. Don't need a premature, but you always want to. So heavy damage coming in from Mokuba to get revenge for last duel. Mokuba starts this duel with some insanely high damage, putting his opponent below half in one turn. So, what are you going to do now? You're below half in one turn, dude. Yeah, Muscle Medic can help, but your life points are going pretty far down. Goblin Attack Force can help, but it will go into defense mode in order to do so. Uh, Troop Dragon, I guess. Yeah, not so good. Mokuba fans rejoice. You're in a really good position here. Troop Dragon has returned. Final attack orders is hilarious, and I love it. Final attack orders does its job. You took 1,700. And yeah, final attack order says you're in attack mode now. You will be able to heal due to your opponent's card, but don't you worry. Ah, uh -uh, final attack order says attack mode. All right, there we go. I'm going to say. Yeah, all monsters attack is a lie. It doesn't make you attack. It just puts you in attack mode. All right, and Tom of the Fighter Lele is here. 900 damage goes through. Grey Wing, get in attack mode. Yeah, nice try, kid. <laughs> nice try, kid. And Muscle Medic. The only chance Mokuba has is drawing his actual support, and he never gets it. He never gets it. He got it all of the other duels. Where is your starry crap? Where is it? Draw it right now. What do you want? What's up, baby? What you, I don't know what that means. We're doing a tournament right now. I love you, though. Yeah, this duel's over. Oh, this duel's super over. I mean, the muscle medic might accidentally heal them, but other than that, the duel's over. It's not even that big of a heal. Yeah, that's about right. What do you want? I don't know what that means. Oh, ego boost for game. Oh, call the haunted to stop it. He ego boosted for game. All right, come on, cutie. Come on. Uh, she's right here. Come on. Yes, ow. Ow, those are nails. I love you, Rocky. Oh, come on. Ow. All right, the cat is now part of the stream, everybody. I hope you're okay with that. So it looks like you bought yourself one turn Mokuba. Do something with it, please. It's embarrassing. Oh, there it is. It won't work, but, you know, there it is. It took too long. Ego boost! Hooray! All right, right. It's okay. Don't you worry. He's out of wind monsters at this point. Dear God. That was brutal. So, we got to watch a bunch of duels. Where I wish this would have happened when he fought freaking Bones. God damn it. All right. Well, there we go. 
Mokuba Kaiba drew all of his support cards and none of his boss monsters. So let's go ahead and get into the next uh, game because that's it. That, that's that match. So the person going to semifinals is Strong Juku. Very good from OCG Elementary. Very proud of you, kid. Your creative deck idea is working. The next duel will be Minion Serpent, the person who took down a pro duelist, Lily Dunanana, will be going up against Rex Raptor. And it's not just that he took her out, it's that he took her out with the Orca Whale's effect, and that was the only reason he won. I love that. Mega Fortress, no, Mega Orca Whale, whatever. A adorable. Roxy's always doing good. She's just really old, so she doesn't like being alone, which is why she's here when I'm streaming. She was sleeping on that bed over there, and now she's awake. So she's with me. So, Serpent, and where is this other guy? Okay, Serpent's ready. Rex Rapti, come on, buddy. People want to watch you duel. You're the OG Dino Duelist. The Black Tyranno D to B. Right. Duel has started, everybody. I'm going to get everything set up. So, we got ourselves the Minion Serpent, and we got ourselves the Rex Rapto. Let's watch these two go at it. Fossil Dig is a great start. He gets himself a Gillosaurus, an amazing card to start the duel with. Let's see what he does with it. He summons it. Gillosaurus is here. Gillosaurus is here. Uh, Gil Jesus Christ, are you serious? Granted, he used Search. He did use Search, so don't you dare try to count it. But uh, Giant Rex. Um, yeah, none of those cards are stronger than this card. You can crash, but you need your Black Tyranno, my friend. You need your Black Tyranno. Crawling Dragon number two, why not? You tried to crash and it cost you 2,000 life points. Not good. I think we're about to see the Orca Whale. His boss monster is coming back. The Orca Mega Fortress. The Orca Mega Fortress is heal, uh, here. And with 2,300 attack, the freaking Giant Rex didn't stand a chance. His only card that can beat it is his boss, Black Tyranno. So either draw Black Tyranno or bust. Harpies, that's nice. Get rid of the buff. Now you can beat it if you get a Silvory Calcos. Hyper is an interesting way to do it. So you're letting him keep it, but you give yourself an advantage here to go in on the opponent's life points. So not bad. <clears throat> not bad. Now what are you going to do with it? No, Rex's Giant Rex is only if something banishes him, not, not an intentional banish card. So he'd be good against Anka D or something, or, or Amnael, or any other duelist that happen to run with some Banish. Well, of all three Gillosauruses, only two remain, and I guarantee you they're not going to remain much longer. Orca Whale is probably going to come out. Yep, Orca Whale is here. And with this whale, we're going to pop one of the Gillosauruses. This is his last chance to get Black Tyranno before it's over. Will you get your Black Tyranno, or will you fall? You will fall. Well, obviously, they have to draw one more monster. I just expect them to. Pot of Greed. With Pot of Greed, what are we going to get? We got one of the best cards in your deck. And with that card, now it's going to take a lot to take you down. Oh, the Ace Monster is gone. Goodbye, Two-Headed King Rex. What a heartbreaker. Terraforming is a little late to the party because your opponent is already so strong. Still, it doesn't hurt to, to play it. You might as well. Giant Rex. No! Giant Rex is one of the few cards that could do it. The TT into TR. The perfect combo. Rex Raptor got wrecked. How is Minion Serpent this good? His strongest card has 2100 base attack. And its effect actually mattered today. But still, Rex Raptor takes an L in game number one. Ban Orca. Where's that hashtag? Keep it up. Hashtag Ban Orca. <laughs> Oh, man. Let's go into game number two. This is crazy. All right. We got game number two. He got his Orca again. Oh, boy. Yeah, that monster's nice if you get the piercing part off. It worked last time. Fossil Dig gets Giant Rex. He loves his Giant Rex, everybody. All right, Giant Rex goes in. How dare you call Rex Raptor a lesser deck? This man's a pro duelist. I understand, though. <laughs> oh. 
Arpy's Feather will not work on Seal, so please don't waste it. Unless you have another card that can pop it. Yep, AI doesn't know. Alright, what a shame. AI wastes its only Harpy's Feather Duster. That's a huge loss. And Rex Raptor could summon that monster for piercing if it wants if he wants to. Doesn't need to, because Giant Rex should be the one to attack. And big damage coming through from Mr. Sealbor Kalkos himself. Now that he got the field spell early, he has full control. This is just like what happened when he fought uh who was his last opponent? Because he just he lost the first duel and then started wrecking them afterwards. Thanks to Sealbor Kalkos. And we're going for piercing, even though you can't attack directly with Giant Rex. You still win, but still. Yeah, Rex Raptor completely obliterates his opponent. A hundred percent. And now we're going into game number three. And it crashed. It took a while this time for that one to crash. It crashed at the beginning of the stream, and now it's crashing near the end, because we're already getting close to the end of top eight. All right, Rex, let's see if... Uh the reduel will go your way. And game number three. This duel decides it all. Will Rex Raptor win it all with his uh, field spell? Or will Minion Serpent pull off some really good combos? Terraforming's really good. Umi's a nice field spell and all, but the Silver Calcos is ten times better. And Fossil Dig as well. Yeah, this man's thinning out his deck. Do not do what you did last time, please. Yeah, I don't know. All right, whatever. We're going to lose Gilosaurus. It happens every time. But I guess he has a target in his grave now, so there, there you go. So how are you going to beat the almighty rat that is so giant you can barely see it? Probably with Umi, now that I think about it. Harpies will work. I understand this one had no concern about getting rid of Seal. It just mattered about hitting the trap card. That was a really good trap he lost. Holy crap. Rex loses one of his best traps, and his opponent is outmatching him right now. The Giant Rat is not strong enough. You're in a little bit of trouble, Rex Raptor. Think of something else. Oh, you want to go somewhere else, Rex? Or Roxy Girl? What do you want to do? Okay. You just be an old kitty. Nope, he did that for Hyper Hammerhead, and now he's got 3,900 damage. No, he does not, unless he's willing to crash. He is unwilling to crash because Hyper Hammerhead has value. Still, gotta be careful. Oh, shit. Now, I was gonna say, even if you Orca Will, it is a problem because they have Hyper Hammerhead. This is why he wasn't willing to crash because now he still has the option with the Hyper Hammerhead play. And now the Orca is going away. And so are your life points. Oh, go don't special summon it. Only special summon when you need to. Not, oh my God, AI. I, I think I specifically did this in Tag Force, where I was like, hey, watch this. I normal summon Gilosaurus. The AI couldn't do it. Just couldn't do it to save their life. And the Orca Whale is back, and for some reason does not attack. Is there a reason? Oh yeah, I forgot. Silver and Kalko's locked. If they have the same attack points, and you know you only can attack the strongest monster, you are locked. And Giant Rex is stronger than the opponent's monster. Yep. Giant Rex by itself, thanks to Silver Calcos, will destroy them. Gillosaurus with Giant Rex is so good. Mother Grizzly, you did not want to top deck another one, but Dark Hole has changed everything. Rex Raptor has to top deck a good card, or he's out of here once and for all. He won't even make top four, which is still, he still did better than Weevil, but still. Fisher, interesting top deck. It's not going to save you at all, but it's interesting at least. Mother Grizzly still rocks a 1,400 to 10. Ah, oh, that monster is 2K. All right, that's really dangerous. Unless Rex Raptor draws a really good dinosaur card, he's in trouble. What will he do with his last turn? He top decks nothing. It's Black Tyranno. It happened. Minion Serpent is a pro killer. He has knocked out multiple pro duelists, and he is going to top four. The Diesel Gang may live on. <laughs> the Diesel Gang may live on. I'm sad to see Rex go, but hey, Lily. I was sad to see Lily go too. All right, Minion Serpent, you are probably the biggest upsetter today. You are the man. You've knocked out two people that are stronger than you with decks with a very basic Sea Serpent deck. The next duel is Bella, who really is a god. Bella knocked out one of the minions, funny enough, and Weevil Underwood. 
but can she knock out Sarah Taker? We've already seen Sarah pop off today. Will she continue to pop off? Or will she run into an opponent like Bella that just steals her monster? All right, where's Sarah at? All right, looks like we're ready to start this duel, guys. Let's go ahead and get into it. Bella versus Sarah. All right, looking at Bella's hand. Bacon Saver is a very weird card to just put in attack mode. Okay, we have an MST. MST hits TT. Panda Borg. MST hits the back row. Okay, that Psychic Sword card is really good, but Sarah hasn't shown off her real card yet. It's time. Oh, not that one. Panda Borg has a very nice effect, so it can make up for the fact that it lost to this monster by summoning a stronger one. Okay. Swords is really good and um, unbelievably annoying. You might as well set another Panda Borg or summon your Silent Psychic Wizard. Alright, that banishes, so that's good. Now what? You bought yourself time, Sarah. What are you going to do with this time? Goblin Zombie, okay, that's good for searching. Not good for power, because you need more power right now. We could get a Synchro Summon to heal. I would have done that. Synchro Summoning, and then you could heal every turn of swords. That, that would be kind of safe. All right, Panda Borg dies, but it wanted to. It's part of the plan. And it summons the Psychic Snail. Very nice card. Zombie Master is here. They're not drawing their stuff just yet, but once they draw it, they can could, they could Normal Summon if they have to. So we're going to see. We have ourselves a set. Everything goes to YouTube, of course. And Sunday's tournament will go to YouTube on Monday, obviously. Just like we did the other week. I think two weeks ago. And let's see what they do. Because right now they have full advantage and they could synchro and they, they have so many plays. They, they can do whatever the hell they want. Oh my god, they can do whatever they want. They have so many plays, they have to think about it. Alright, what play will you choose? You're just going for damage. <laughs> Alright, I think I see what you're planning on doing. You are you're a funny guy. You're a funny guy there, um, Bella. That's uh bacon saver will save your bacon for the first attack, but not the second attack. And there goes that guy. There goes your life points, and you're lucky to have survived. If he had paid 800 more, you would have lost. But he didn't expect the bacon saver, even though he should have. Alright, you bought yourself one turn, and all you have is a guard ghost. Guard ghost isn't going to do a damn thing. Psychic snail, I don't think we need to do it again, but you can do whatever you want, I'm just saying. I'm just saying, you can have fun for all I care. Nah, you're just going to go in, alright, that's fine. And Bella, with a brand new play we have not seen, has won the duel. Sarah Taker loses game number one. This is starting to feel more like Illusion Park. She needs to get luckier. Let's go ahead and get into game number two and see what happens. I need more water. All right, good. Let's do this. Panda Borgs are good. They're very safe cards to have, so you're probably going to set one of those. I stand by it. You're still probably going to set one of those. Got lots of revival cards, like infinite revival. Weird play to do it aggressively. Um, probably not worth, in my opinion. Interesting card to throw away. I'm kind of scared now. Very interesting card to throw away. Harold is here. Okay. I, I know you have lots of revival, so you probably are going to need to use it. Crabons can help. You might need to go for a Synchro Summon. I don't think you have a level 6 Synchro. I think you only have Magical Android, though, so yeah. Yeah. What are you doing? Okay. You really... Bella, your life points. Be Bella. Bella. Bella, listen to me. Your life points. They matter. 
I understand it's like I don't it doesn't matter as long as I have a hundred left or I have one life point left, but but what about Ukazi? But what about Ukazi? A set. She needs to synchro to heal or she's gonna die. Oh shit! She's out of she's out of options here. She's doesn't oh it's over. It's over. It's over. Sarah takes game two. Sarah takes game two, everybody. Alright, Guard Ghost is gonna do it. That was that TT was so valuable. And yeah, Sarah takes it pretty easily in game number two. Let's get into game number three of top eight. Will these which character is going to move in to top four? Who will be a semi-finalist? Will it be Pro Duelist Sarah Taker or Bella? Bella. Killer of King of Games. Alright. She could Synchro Summon with this hand. She just needs to keep Psychic Snail alive. She hasn't used her Synchro against Sarah yet. And her Synchro won her her duel against Weevil. MST. Well, a lot of things did, but that was part of it. Magic Cylinder's gone. Early Swords, but you could Harpies it. You could Harpies it. Just hope you could do it in time. All right. Harpy time. Yeah. Expected. That's what we all expected. Eldritch is here. You're not going to beat that even if you had enough attack points. But there is a card in your hand that can do something interesting. So we are going to summon the Magical Android. This is the strongest card in her deck in terms of attack points. Psychokinesis does work really well with it. We're going to get rid of the freaking Eldritch, but it can come back very easily. Harold is also going to die, which was part of the reason that he can come back. And the heal is going to matter. For a Psychic deck, having some heals definitely matters. Trap. There it is. I was going to say, do they have a trap card? Trap. And card comes back with way too much attack points. And now you're in trouble. I know you have some really cool plays with your Mind Master and whatever, but you're not you're not fighting a normal duelist. You're not fighting the average duelist anymore, Bella. You're fighting someone that should have been king, but they never drew their monsters. And it really screwed them over. Crabons can help. I'm not gonna lie. Excuse me? You drew a card that could actually save you. And you choose a card that loses you the duel. Excuse me. Dark hole or bust, and even then you lose. D Dark hole or bust. This isn't going to help you. I mean, yes, you'll heal if you survive, but you die. All right, 600 life points, go. Attack for game. Attack for game. And that's the end of the duel. The winner is Sarah Taker. Bella got her in the first duel with a really crazy combo play, but in this duel, it is over. Let's go ahead and let's get into the final fight of top eight. This is the final fight. So let's go ahead and see who's up next. Final fight of top eight is going to be a rematch in the minor league tournament. These two fought in top eight, and now they're going to fight again in a top eight tournament. In top eight of a tournament, who will win? Will it be Alda V Stormer, the streamer, or will it be Yami Kuroda, the OCG elementary duelist? I believe the second strongest duelist at that uh, that school. All right, looking around for him. Here we go. Rematch of the century. Their last duel resulted in many death threats, but this duel, hopefully not. Uh, Alda is ready to duel. And Yami is ready to duel. Looks like we're going to have some fun. All right, Pod agreed. Infinity Dark is gone. Rises in the grave, which could be good. I know it's not going to get its tribute effect, but could be good. Oh, my God. 
He spent a whole dark hole on that thing. A whole dark hole. Hunter Owl is not so good by itself, but it doesn't have to be alone because Rise is here to help. All right, Rise is here to help, and it looks like all the V-Stormers in a great spot. 2400 damage comes through the wrong way, but it doesn't matter as you have field advantage. Though, if you get, you know, destroyed by some effects, you're done. All right. Oh, interesting. It, it's a cost, but... Oh, they're only using it to... Oh, they're stalling! They're trying to get Caius! They're trying to get Caius! Windstorm! They were attempting for Caius! I understand. I know the play you were trying to make, Yami Kuroda. But it will not work. Alda V-Stormer has pretty much game. You already dark hold a flying Kamakiri, you dumb idiot. What are you going to do now? I, I'm going to stand by what I said. What are you going to do now? There's a trap. There is a trap. Alda might get her revenge this time. Sonic Shooter is here. Regeki Break can only pop one card, and that's not going to be enough. That's a funny target, but it works. It's not going to be enough. The Hunter Owl is still too strong. Here comes the attack, everybody. Alda V-Stormer takes game number one. She's going to get her revenge against Yami Kuroda. She, needs, she just needs one more duel to go that way. She gets one more duel like that, and she's going all the way to semifinals. Yami Kuroda, are you really going to drop it again? Don't drop this ball. You need it. Ah, double flying can carry. I'm lucky. Oh, it could be lucky. Depends on if they dark hole you again. All right. Do not use solemn judgment to stop a dark hole in flying Kamikiri. That's all I have to say. Oh, shit. You know what? Normally, I'd say no, but that field spell gives a huge advantage to Yami Kuroda. So I almost want to say yes. He's still stronger than you, but at least your tributes can beat him. You just need to draw your tributes. Flying Kamikiri comes through. Hunter Owl is there. Hunter Owl with Sonic Shooter. Flying Kamikiri. None of this is enough. Harvey's Brother isn't enough. Call the Haunted. It's starting to get enough. Yep, that's probably enough. The winner was Alda V-Stormer. All right. Hunter Owl goes in for 300. 25 and 18 go next. And it looks like the end of the duel is that we're about to see the end of the duel. No need for predictions, uh, Jason. The duel is going to be over before the predictions end. I guarantee it. Flying Kamikiri comes through and it's over. You can cancel those predictions, Jason. Like I said, the duel is over. 1203 k the game-winning attack. Alda got her revenge, and she 2 owed her opponent like it was nothing. Yep, that works. Get 2 owed So, we're going to go ahead and we're going to uh, get into our next fight. The next fight of the tournament is going to be top four semifinals. Let's see who's up next. So, the four strongest duelists in the Youth Cup are Alda V Stormer, the streamer, Pro Sarah Taker, which makes the most sense, and Minion Serpent, which is the huge, that is the biggest upset of the day. Minion Serpent with his Orca Whale. And finally, Strong Jukyu, another one of those OCG elementary students, the fourth ranked one. Let's see how he does against the Serpent. Who do you guys think will do it? Who's going to Grand Finals, Strong Jukyu or Minion Serpent? OCG Elementary or one of the Diesel Gang? Ban the Orca. The Orca must be banned. All right, strong. There he is. Let's go ahead and start this duel. Semifinals has officially begun. Let's go. All right, where are you guys? Only one of the Diesel Gang minions have really shown up today, and he's done an amazing job. And then we have Strong Juku, who's doing an even better job, in my opinion. Anyone use Max C in tournaments? No. 
Uh, and we got ourselves skill drain extremely early, which stops the effects, and that is completely brutal. Anything else? All right, Indomitable Fighter Lele. No one's going to be forced into defense mode. Mother Grizzly still works in the grave. Torrent Tribute, uh, Torrent Reborn, okay, but I would have saved it. Wait for that Dark Hole since you're already going to get a Mother Grizzly anyway. And Indomitable Fighter Lele goes in. Lots of Mother Grizzlies, but since you can't use your effects, how are you going to win? Like, actually, how does he win without effects? Maybe his field spell, but other than that, how does he win without effects? I don't think he can win. G Wart Warwolf, okay, Mother Grizzly's gone. Spine Gilman's gone. It doesn't have its effect because of skill drain. Of course, a Harpy's Feather Duster can turn the whole duel around, but until we see a Harpy's Feather Duster or an MST, none of this matters. Poseidon Wave could be really good if you were smart enough to put everything in attack mode. It'd be super funny too. I, I, please do it. It'd be so much burn. You're going to lose anyway. You might as well. Ah, you coward. Didn't even summon the Orca Whale. That's how I know you're a coward. All right. Goblins for days. Literally, the early skill drain for Strong Juku gives him so much presence in the game that there's nothing you can do. Um, it's, it's a brutal, brutal turn. All right. All we have is an Orca Whale in a dream. Your field spell can give you attack buff, but it won't be enough. Oh, that's adorable. <laughs> that card's adorable. All right, the Gilman has returned for Orca Whale to kill one monster. It won't even kill one monster. The Ego Boost says no. That is it. The end of the duel is brutal. The minion has finally met his match. A person that says no effects. I remember during the intro, I mentioned that, hey, Stronjuku is going to be like another Anka D kind of duelist where he completely counters characters. And I was right. And I warned you all. And there we go, everybody. The winner of duel number one is Strong. Strong has won the first duel. The next duel. Minion, just hope he doesn't get skill drain. If he doesn't get skill drain, I, give you, I, I would say you have a chance. Or if you draw your spell trap destruction, I'd say you have a chance. Dark Hole is nice, but it probably won't matter. I love that you think that Sea Serpent's going to be strong enough. I love that you have that much confidence. <laughs> I know that sounds mean, but I love that he thought that would matter. Very adorable. This is the wrong opponent to think you're stronger than. Skill Drain. Okay, the Skill Drain is huge to get that on the first turn again. Strong is unbelievably lucky to do that. So what are you going to do? You're right. Skill Drain does stop some modern Yu-Gi-Oh stuff. Um, but I will definitely say that Minion Serpent does not even consider... It would not even be considered close to that. Muscle Medic is here, and Muscle Medic does its damage. Indomitable Fire Lele comes through. And Dark Hole is definitely coming through, and that Mother Grizzly still has value. Do Draw MST. Pot of Greed. There we go. Come on. Come on. Come on. At least Harpies. You did not want a second Mother Grizzly. I promise you that. You got two of your Orca Whales. That's really cool and all, but I don't like your odds. Oh, are we going to go for an Orca Whale? Okay, the Orca has been summoned. It can beat one-fourth of Strong's deck since he does have monsters that are just 2K beaters. The problem is that they... Oh! Oh, wait! Minion Serpent has a chance, and most of his monsters have zero defense. The Sea Serpent Man is here. Final attack orders just to mess with you. It was a 2K beater. All right, you got... Uh, look, I didn't expect it either, man. You got a little, a little unlucky there. So, what do we got? Final attack orders. Do you draw an R2K beater? He can do it! Let's go! Minion Serpent, this is your only chance. Even with the early skill drain, you already killed a lot of his big beaters, and he's not drawing any... Ah, uh, shit. Well, that's not good. The one burn card and it's gone. Your opponent got the heart. You know who needs the harpies? It's you. But your opponent got it. I feel so bad for you, man. His only hope is Harpy's Feather Duster. He draws harpies or he dies. That's it. Harpies are bust. 
Monster Reborn to steal your opponent's graveyard monster? Oh, that's the best they had? That was all they had left? Dude, what? All right, get him out of here. That's, he tried. Oh, he still doesn't have any monsters, so it's not over yet, but you, you know Minion Serpent's done for. He bought himself one more turn. You got one more turn thanks to that Monster Born or whatever. Good luck. Yeah, I do know Alexi, but I actually considered it, but it was way less consistent with Bad Reaction. It's just way better with Skill Drain, because Skill Drain does a much better job than one monster, since it affects all monsters. All right, Mother Grizzly's gone. It could try to stall, but it's not going to do a great job at it. Torrential Reborn is hilarious, because it will cost you the duel. Almost cost you the duel. Actually, no, it probably cost you. Oh, no, because you can go in defense mode. Oh, no, you can't. I forgot. I'm an idiot. Yeah, no, it cost you the duel. Yeah. All right. GG. <laughs> and that is the end of the duel. The winner is Strong. Strong will be going all the way to Grand Finals. But can he win the tournament? Can an elementary school student get $1,000, which would be hilarious? Because then what the hell is he going to do with $1,000? Some people already have plans on what to do with the prize money. Other people, not so much. Strong does not have a plan. The next duelist is Sa or the next duel is Sarah Taker versus Alda V Stormer. All right, who here wants to bet that Alda can beat Sarah? I didn't think so. <laughs> I didn't think so. I mean, come on. It ain't gonna happen. It just ain't gonna happen. Alda V Stormer, she cannot beat. If if it happens again like the last tournament where she doesn't get her monster, then yes, obviously Alda can win. But she has to be unbelievably lucky, like how. Uh, what was it? Koyo. How lucky Koyo was. Alright, so let's see. Nope, already has it in her hand. We can see it. It's right there. Flying Kamakiri versus five monsters that are all stronger than you. All right, there we go. That's always good. Thousand dollars worth of toys. That makes sense. Thousand dollars worth one TCG meta deck. Oh god, why do people play Yu-Gi-Oh? It's disgusting. A disgusting game. A devil's game. All right, flying. Oh, is she going for Dark Storm Dragon? No, I, I got my hopes up. Oh wait, this works. She's going for uh, Hunter Owl. I mean, it's too long of an effect. You're not going to be able to read any of it. Card of the left of Eldritch, it's too long of an effect. Good luck to you. Its name is Guard Ghost, though. All right, Harold is here. Harold's going to be backed up by a Paladin. And they know that if they get rid of all the wind monsters, that that Hunter Owl isn't so strong anymore. Yeah, anything zombie related is going to be going to be in this deck. Rise up. Oh, she's going to force you to draw that. That's really good. Rise up pretty early. That's great for Alda. She's fighting hard. Her opponent's in a critical condition right now and is forced to draw that monster, which is not going to help. It has no good defense either. All right. With an equip spell or a special summon, this duel could be over. Over and Alda could have done it. Harpy's Brother's nice. It will defeat the guard ghost. Attack goes through. 2400. 500 burn! Is all we need. And she drew them back to back. That sucks. I know one was forced. But the fact that the next card was going to be that anyway, that sucks. The Sonic Duck comes through. And Alda V Stormer gets lucky as hell and takes game number one. Game number one goes to Alda. The pro duelist Sarah is shook. She doesn't know what happened. But she's not out of the tournament just yet. We've seen her go to game three uh, uh, multiple times today. So it's not like it can't happen again. Ah, oh, there it is. This hand's much better, isn't it? Unless Ryza happens. Ryza actually would be a problem. All right. So what are we going to do here? Plus no back row because of Harpies. You know, this hand was so bust. That hand is so busted. Sarah Taker got like the perfect hand. All right, Harpy's Feather says no. Yeah, that card does not matter at all. 
It would have mattered if you kept it in your hand. But uh, your opponent had harpies on the first. Oh, you lost magic cylinder! Oh my god, you are so unlucky. And what else do we got? And Harold, why not? Sylvie, Stormer, this is a pro when you've upset them. <laughs> this is what happens when you upset a pro duelist. They do this to you. This is like when Rex Raptor started pulling Silvor Calcos and just started wrecking people. That's the end of the duel. We're probably already going to game three. It, it's likely. Yep, that sounds about right. Yep. And this is it. Game number three. Here we come. And that's what Sarah can do when she draws the right stuff. Sometimes she doesn't, sometimes she does. Apparently during Illusion Park, she really did not. So let's go ahead and get into game number three. Will Alda V Stormer have the biggest upset of the day? Or will Sarah Taker take it all the way? That is an interesting and pretty good hand. I would I would call it, I know it looks bad, but because of the Eldritch's effect, I would say he's going to or Sarah's gonna win. Pot of Greed is nice though, okay, maybe. Sonic Dog. <laughs> Let's go Sonic Dog. Alright, so what are you gonna do now? Is it time Oh Pot of Greed. Freaking hell. Ah, there it is. And here we go. Get rid of the cards. You use this on purpose so you can special summon your monster by getting rid of the magic cylinder. Here we go. 35. Oh, you chose ill but You know what? That's a good choice. That is actually an amazing choice by Sarah Taker. And by doing so, Sarah Taker won next duel. Our right, next turn. Next turn is basically guaranteed game. Thanks to Premature Burial. Great job, Alda! You did your bet! Alda, why didn't you just dark hole? Oh, you have swords. I stand correct. I forgot that that card is protected by that thousand attack point effect. I forgot. I forgot. It's not something I see every day. Uh, Ill Bud, here we go. We're going to do this ex exact same play. This time we're going to summon an Eldritch, probably. Yep, there we go. Golden Lord. That card is nice and safe. We're going to summon Gurnia. We're going to do this again. Goodbye, Swords. With Swords gone, the game-winning attack comes through. And Birthright. Sonic Duck will hold the field. The Duck doesn't want it to end, but it has to end. That is game. Sarah Taker is in Grand Finals. We are now going to be moving in to our third place breather match. And... We are going to see who can get bronze in this fun Youth Cup tournament. Will it be Alda V Stormer or Minion Serpent? Place your bets. Where is Minion Serpent? All right, looks like I'm ready to start the duel. I already had one of the duels ready to go, even though I deleted their face because I'm dumb. Uh, I'm going to go look for them again, and we're going to watch them duel. Minion Serpent is ready. Alda V Stormer is ready. Let's watch these two go at it. Between these two, I got to go with Alda V Stormer. I think Minion Serpent has been a real surprise character for today, but I think fourth place is what he deserves. That's about it. Is Alda a Twitch partner? Probably. Probably. All right. So they're tied in attack points. He needs his Umi to beat that uh, Harpy's brother. And that's fun to use that card. Windstorm will do its job. Harpy's brother will be stopped and the burn will hurt. You need more than one monster. You had... Yikes. Old is bricked. She probably has triple Darkstorm in her hand. We can't prove it, but I feel it. Toriantro Reborn is hilarious. That's so much damage. That's such a good play. Holy crap. Holy crap, man. All right. Alda V Stormer is in one of the worst positions I've seen in a long time. She's she's probably done for. Dark Hole is nice and all, but what, 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 why did you brick last turn? What, what else do you got? You got Garuda. Oh, you just needed a monster in the grave. I, oh, there's Dark Storm. There we go. All right. Here we go. Alda V Stormer with the comeback. She got her boss monster out and she's ready to fight. And she normal summoned it, because why not? 
Mother Grizzly is trying to fight back. I don't know why it's doing what it just did. I guess to defeat Garuda. Yep, that's why Gilman can do it. But even if you kill Garuda, Darkstorm's just staring at you. Menacingly. <laughs> it's gonna get you. Ooh, Sonic Shoot! I know that's why she had two Garudas in her hand. That's what the brick was. All right, a dark hole and two Garudas. And that is it! A big comeback! Alda V-Stormer takes game number one. From no life points to who cares? I already beat you. All right, let's go into game number two. Will Alda be getting a bronze medal and making her chat blow up with happiness? Or will she be going into fourth? And maybe Minion Serpent can win some, you know, small money. You get, like, nothing for second, third, and fourth, but whatever. It's got to be better than zero. In my opinion, this guy's been playing better than Diesel Kane, and I feel bad saying that. Magic Cylinder comes through, and Harpy's brother will pay the price. Sorry, Elda. You wanted this to happen. Torpedo Fish can combo with Orca Whale, and you have Orca Whale. Orca Whale is here. That's true, they probably are going crazy just for that fight alone. Bernog. And it looks like Mother Grizzly is back, even though you didn't do that earlier. You could have done 1400 damage. You should never do that on main phase two. It's just a really dumb idea. Torpedo Fish, are you ready to do some fun stuff? Nope, we could probably just go for Lancer and go for damage. Yeah, makes sense. All right, Lancer for damage. Hunter Owl is gone. So are your life points. It looks like he has her this time. All right, Alda. I think we're. I think we only had game threes once we got past like top sixteen. Foolish burial for what? Your boss, but you need to find a way to revive it. Uh, you just buffed your opponent by doing that. I, I guarantee it. Oh yeah. Wow, that's desperation. That is desperation. That did not work out in your favor. Yep, that thing does piercing now. <laughs> That did not go your way, did it, Alda? We're going into game number three now, everybody, and Minion Serpent has done it. Minion Serpent will take the game. This is it. The bronze medal will be decided right now. I'm going to say it. Minion Serpent, you are going to lose. It's going to be Alda. There's no way you're taking it. No way I would allow that. I, I will literally cut the video. You were supposed to be a joke Orca deck. You weren't supposed to make it this far. <laughs> and then you actually use the Orca properly to win a duel, which is insane. All right, Serpent's got good back row, though. Pot of Greed comes through. Harpy's brother uh, joins the field, but it's a tie game. I don't know which one's going to be the aggressor. Dark Hole's unnecessary. Please don't use it, thank God. And it looks like we're going to go for this, but Windstorm says no. And by doing that, both your monsters are stuck in defense, though I'm sure your back row will protect you. So, what else do you got, Alda? Anything special? Rise is pretty good. I will admit, Rise is pretty... Ah! Oh, instead of going back to the top of the deck, which you might have preferred, it's actually going to die. All right, well, there goes Rise. Uh, Garuda's here! And the backup... Yeah, Pocket Garuda! <laughs> Pocket Garuda does 1,600 damage! Great job, Garuda. Umi is here, but Umi won't make a difference. Actually, it might. It'll make Torpedo Fish immune to spell cards. Do it. Torpedo Fish is now immune to spell cards. You cannot dark hole this monster. It is invincible. Battlestorm. Yeah, Battlestorm's real good. And Torrential Reborn. I don't know why you didn't do that earlier, but whatever. So unless you draw Orca, it's over because you need a tribute or a revival card. It's all right, but it's not going to do it. Oh, it is going to do it. The Umi boost. It'll make Spike Gilman stronger by 100. Holy crap, that mattered. Wait a minute. You're losing. Umi made a difference. That that 200 extra points actually made the difference. Flying Kamakiri. This is actually a... You could have just crashed off that monster, and then you got to kill the monster, and I guess it doesn't matter. Why do I care? You didn't even choose Flying Kamakiri, so why do I care? Uh, well, guys, it's official. We're going to have to ban the Orca. This guy's going to win with the Orca. He got called the Haunted. He got called the Haunted. You, you know he's going to do it. A set? 
He's gonna do it. He's gonna do the orca. Here we go. Arm Sea Hunter. Oh, he chose Arm Sea Hunter instead of the orca. Oh, did the orca not go to the grave this tool? I don't remember. It doesn't matter. What matters is Flying Kamakiri is here to stall. Flying Kamakiri is probably out of... Oh, shit. No effects. I forgot. No effects. Alda has one turn. What will she do with her final turn? Heavy Storm's good, but unless you have 2200 defense, it did not matter. I believe that this is it, and I believe that the Minion Serpent had one of the best runs today for some rando character. Minion Serpent will take third place and get the very nice bronze medal in the Youth Cup. Great job, Minion Serpent. We're all proud of you. All five of us. Thank you for following. Now that this has happened, it is time for Grand Finals in the Youth Cup. We're going to get rid of the, the Minion Serpent really quick and all the V-Stormer. And it is time for our two strongest characters to fight. OCG Elementary's Strong Juku versus a Pro Duelist, Sarah Taker. Strong Juku or Sarah Taker. Those are your only options. Make a choice now. Alda, Alda, Alda. Yeah, strong Juku. And Sarah Taker. Let's see here. I'm having trouble finding them for some reason. Like, I'm actually just lost. Oh, there he is. He's in the corner. Strong's in the corner. All right. Strong's in the corner, and Sarah is probably also in the corner since I didn't see her. Oh, nope. There she is. Right next to Lily. All right, guys, let's go ahead and do this. It's time. Who is the strongest duelist in the Youth Cup? Strong Juku or Sarah Taker? Place your bets. It looks like he started with none of his combos, but Harpy's Feather is very nice to have. Though it might not matter if she started with her trap. Nope. Indomitable Fighter Lele will do its job, but like I said, he started with zero combos, so he's in a lot of trouble here. Lots of good monsters, though, if, you know, your opponent doesn't do any special summoning. Speak of the devil. Hi there, Paladin. Hi there, Herald. Okay. Okay. Good start for Sarah Taker. Even a back row card to make it even scarier. They held back a back row card. Dark Hole's nice, but it's not necessary. I'm glad they agree. Gmort Warwolf is going to do some good work here. More Jimmy Johns, of course. We got Phoenix Wing. Wow, you just did that in half a second. All right. Um, this is an interesting situation where I will say Sarah is in trouble. Sarah Taker is in trouble, even though I know he's going to draw Gmorped. Why didn't you use G-Warp? Why would you intentionally put that monster in defense? Are you baiting? Maybe you're baiting. I don't like it, though. I don't like it one bit. Yo! Monster of Born to steal the Indomitable Fighter! And it will be baited because it has to destroy that monster! Never mind! Strong knew what he was doing. He baited the opponent. And now he has G-Warp Warwolf just waiting to go. Or Elite. That doesn't matter. It do not matter. Oh, fuck. Oh, shit. Sarah Taker in game number one is in a lot of danger. It's not over. She's just in danger. One trap could save her. It only takes one trap to save her. But things could go real bad right now. He actually has game if he uses skill drain on main phase one. He did not use skill drain on main phase one. He messed up. He didn't use it at all. What? He had game and he also just didn't use it at all? Ex excuse me? I mean, you still probably win, but you got to be more careful there, buddy. You're going up against a pro duelist. You don't want to make those mistakes. 
All right, Goblin Zombie still gets its effect. Skill Drain doesn't affect it in any way, shape, or form. And, of course, Goblin Elite Attack Force, or whatever they call it, is going to not end the duel. Right, Geki Break? Funny combo. And Gene War Warwolf is going to end the duel. Game number one goes to Strong. We've already seen Sarah lose a ton of game number ones, though. She always goes to game three, and then she just wins super quickly because it's just odds on whether or not she's going to get her stuff. She needs one of her... She has six cards to draw. Any of her Eldritch or any of her Eldritch Trap cards. There are six cards, and that's pretty likely to draw them. All right. We're going into game number two. Sarah Taker versus Strong. Will Strong win that $1,000, or will Sarah blows e blow everybody's mind with an Eldritch play? Indomitable's pretty safe. Oh, okay. Well, we're going to Dark Hole it. It was a very scary Indomitable fighter. It was very scary. And it's back. I can hear my cat snoring. She's adorable. Roxy, you're adorable. All right. Final attack orders is really good. Holy shit. Strong is in a very strong position to win this duel right now. It all depends on if Sarah gets her thing. She needs any Eldritch card. Anything. There are six in her deck. Zombie Master is really good. Bacon Saver is really good. Good combo. It's not going to work, but it's really good. Final attack orders. Bacon Saver saves her bacon. <laughs> that actually works. But no traps. This whole duel could be decided right now. Gene War Warwolf. All right. Damage coming through. Is the tournament going to be decided by final attack orders, Strong Juke you. A jokey deck, which counters a lot of duelists with Skill Dream when he does get it. It's over. Holy shit, he won! Strong is your winner. He's going to be pro. Sarah Taker's going to lose. Sarah Taker loses Strong of OCG Academy is going to be your champion of the Youth Cup. The Youth Champion Strong Juke. You random gamer, thank you so much for the subs. We hit 114 today. I feel so freaking pumped. That was awesome. So that's what happened during the Illusion Park Tournament. <laughs> so that's what happened. Everybody, the Youth Cup has come to an end. All of our fun young duelists had a great time today. They showed us some really fun combos. We got to see a lot of new decks and some of our old decks like Alda V Stormer and Minion Serpent with a few upgrades really showed off and really pulled off some cool combos. But at the end of the day, the deck that wins is Strong Juku with his final attack orders deck and a bunch of goblins slash Gene War Warlow slash Dark Elf slash whatever. That was crazy. That was an absolutely insane tournament. I had so much fun with it. Berkey, thank you so or yeah, Berkey, thank you so much for following. I appreciate that. I appreciate all of the people here today. Thank you so much for coming. Tomorrow. I will be streaming again, same time that I started today's stream, and it will be the American Academy versus Dual Academy Tournament. American Academy students are coming all the way from America just to duel our guys. Are you ready? I know I am. But before we leave, let's go ahead and take a look. Strong Juku, 5-0. Sarah Taker, 3-1. Minion Serpent, 4-1. Alda V Stormer, 3-2. Honorable mentions. Mokuba had a crazy deck today. He just kind of bricked in his, la in his top eight duel. Rex Raptor did really well today, but he ran into an opponent that got him. Bella is a god stopper. She beat the king of games, and there are going to be ramifications for that. Yami Kuroda did worse this tournament than the minor league, but at the same time, who cares? Because this is not for like a pro this is not like for rank or anything. Minor league actually had more stakes because the minor league gave you a chance to go to the Illusion Park, which was Bright Abyss. But yeah, that is going to be it, guys. Those were our strongest duelists of the day. I hope you enjoyed all the new decks. I hope you enjoyed all the new duelists. And I hope you enjoyed seeing the old duelists again. Next week, or not next week, uh, tomorrow, we're going to be doing our tournament. It's going to be fun. It's going to be Dual Academy versus American Academy. And we're going to see a lot of those planetary decks. We're going to see a lot of char new characters. And we're going to see some characters you might remember. So, bye, everybody. See you next time. <laughs>